Ah, look at this. Look at all these fun little, fun little nifty details we can see now. So much better. I like having these smaller sponges like this, especially on kind of tight, complicated figures like this. I can get in there, get at some of that stuff without, well, ripping off any pieces, which is always a good thing. There. Let's grab ourselves another one of our big old crap brushes here and keep going. Well, it'll be, I obviously I can't look at it right now, but I, after this is over, I'll double check and make sure I do believe it is in there. Uh, let me see. I hit you up on the YouTube with a question about oil painting. Oh, thanks, Fly. Oh, yeah, Fly Monkey. Yeah, the mystery of the modern conveniences, that's for sure. So, Fly Monkey, yeah, hopefully that was that was helpful for you. And, I, well, here, this is probably the... This is the best way to, to see it or show it, is just minimal amounts of paint. So we have very little paint done here already. Here we were just starting to do some secondary, just some glazes on it. Because all this is dark, uh, dry, we're just starting to add some slightly lighter colors to that. And this one here, there's parts of them that, that are almost dry already. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of parts on this that are actually dry. Like, uh, yeah... See the base? No paint coming off of there. So say we all. Hey, hey, we get sound and we get flying monkey. He's doing it. He's doing it. But then along comes, he's like, ah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh-oh. And he's like, why does it always have to be birds? They're always chasing him away. It's like everything has wings. It's always chasing him away. So thanks again, flying monkey. I appreciate that. Now, where is our, just looking for my brush that I just gathered. Here we go. Do we want some more? Nah, let's go on to this one. So let's take some off white here. And I think I was telling you about dry brush in there, fly a monkey. You see how little paint is actually going onto my hand. Now watch what happens. And this, this crazy brush hits this over here. And you can see, see how that's actually blending right there? Now look at that brush. You can see that that dark undertone is getting onto the brush. So let's do this back here. Let's do this over here. So you can see how that's, look at that. Look how dark that is. So that's what we were talking about. Uh, look, look at how you can see, I'm just kind of scumbling that paint into that brush. It's just very minimal amounts of paint. But then look at what happens when it hits this thing. Right, this is crazy. Look at this. The nice thing is, though, it's not going to give you that, that whole dry brush look because it's blending. Look at, <laughs> look at how much of the old paint it's picking up there. So we go back here. We get some more. We're not even stuck using just that. We can get some of this almost like a purplish blue in here. And this is how we take advantage of that that little bit of pre-glaze. Can do some more. Look at this. It's setting a nice tone for us that we can work from. But again, look at how much that old paint that it's picking up. Now, let's see. So I'm pretty stoked with the results. Yeah, oh, that was just uh, that was some pretty fantabulous stuff. It was really great to see that. And it was just it was just funny that that it was that figure too. After having just done that one, so yeah, that's uh, that is really cool. Uh, let me see. Oh, hey, Dragon Eye, how are you doing? Yeah, let's get a touch of more of our lights in here. It's weird after doing all the glowy stuff on these guys. These are the this is like the first one that doesn't really have the glowy stuff on it at all. So look at how much of that it picks up. It's unbelievable. Hey, Ozzy, how are you doing? Yeah, we're getting a little earlier start here tonight. 
it's 7.49 p.m. here instead of, what was it, 11.20 or something like that when I started last night. So just a little bit earlier, fortunately, this time. And again, see, it was just a very little paint. Does not take much to have a big influence with the oils here. Oh, let me see. Nessie sleepy at that time, yeah. Well, actually, this was, well, it's going to be, uh, whatchamacallit, it'll be a, not a VOD, but it's going to be a, a highlight. And it is, it was, well, it was a five-hour session. So I think I can break that up either into two parts for a YouTube video or just kind of break it down into like a three-and-a-half-hour, something like that overall. Thing and just chuck that up on YouTube. Uh, look at look at all the fun little fun little lights we're getting in here now. And because we use different colors in that pre-glaze, you can see we're getting different colors. A little bit of different color. Each time we do this, the white's mixing with something different. Here it's mixing more with the indigo blue. In other places, it's mixing with the burnt umber. In other places, it's mixing with that Van Dyke brown. Obviously, we, we'll go back in here and do some additional stuff, but it does set us down, sets us down a nice little path here. Back into our base here. We're going to hit some of that with the, some of our indigo. Then I have to figure out, okay, is there enough space on here to maybe do part of a, a little bit of a freehand symbol on there? Maybe not. Maybe it's just going to be the pattern. But look at look at the armor already. You can see how nice and smooth that is, and all we're doing is just adjusting this right over the top of it. It just it, it's that easy. It's insane how easy it can be. Ah, uh, let me see. Uh, no, Rex, it's a some of this is our off white yellow over here. We even have some of this crazy green and some of our blue. So yeah, there's no uh, there's no white in here actually yet. Oh, look at this! We got Techno Cat, and and that's gonna drop down. There it is. He's like, that's me. That's mine. It's in here somewhere. And he's like, uh-oh. Gets chased away every single time. He's always getting chased away. Thanks again, Techno Cat. Appreciate that. So I think we've got some of our nifty lighter colors in place. Let's see if we can start to maybe add something like our, oh, something like this yellow ochre, because that was sort of a neat add. I want some of our burnt umber, too. That was pretty nifty over here on this guy's leather, so why don't we do that again? Uh, let's see. May I ask your philosophy on when to use which white, or are you just getting a variety of colors around? Uh, Rex, it's always, we're always looking for that color variety, and there's never any rules or rhyme or reason to it. Uh, all I know is that in some of these areas, there was more indigo blue because I wanted to have a bluish tint. Some areas, there was more of the burnt umber, like up here, because I wanted a brownish tint. And some areas down here, I had that Van Dyke brown. That's going to be more of a grayish type color. All I'm looking at, at this point is just to make some things a little bit lighter and then start to play off of those. So like here, we're starting to add some of this ochre to it. That's starting to change this around a little bit. That's why we're going to have to reflect that ochre over here. Oh, let's see. Ah, Technocat finally has a night off. Have you been able to uh, catch any like like Drew's stuff or uh, Drax's stuff or is just work completely kept you away from all of those so see, here's another example Rex what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this basically faux cadmium yellow here and we're going to start to introduce that into a couple of areas here let's see that again it's a uh, there's no specific is okay well we're always going to put this here Ah, look at see what that yellow does right in there. Here, let's get a little bit of this on the skull here. Also, as Nessie knows and everyone else, it's that whole idea of if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. 
we're going to get some of our Terra Rosa mixed with this. And you can see we're, we're, we just kind of play off of that lighter color. We're going to go back and we'll do some glazing stuff on that too. Now we're going to hit some of our some of our green into here. We are just looking for as much as much variety as I can possibly toss into this. Skin tones, we know we want a little bit of greenishness into that. We know we want to get a little bit of a purple tone. Let's see if we can't have some kind of a pinkish color for the face or some kind of weird pallid tone like that. We'll even let some of that maybe mix into the armor over here. Hey, Nosferatu, how are you doing? Oh, I'd love to stay for the stream and keep mixing my app to lungs, but I have to work tomorrow morning. Ah, no problem, Nosferatu. That, that's okay. You, you know this is always available for you as a, uh, as a highlight later on. Let's see. So talking about Wicked Elf, the the Wapelius code has been used a dozen times. Well, that's good news. That's that's what we do here is we wreck stock. We we completely annihilate everybody's stock. That's what we do here. Uh, what is it? It's a 15% discount right on the Wicked Elf stuff if they just use the Wapelius code with the capital W at at the at the top of it, I believe. So we'll make that mask maybe a bit lighter. Let's get a couple of other lights here. Going to go back to some of that green there. Uh, let me see. We'll look to, okay, I think we're all caught up there on the chats. Now it's a, we got some of that green in here. We're looking to do a little bit of our reflected light over on this side. And remember, we're going to be going back in here with more glazes and other things. We're just getting the party started here. Now, we also want to do some of this, uh, our purple here, right? That's our, oh, what the heck is that? Egyptian Violet. I keep thinking about all the other companies, like the uh, Gamelin, was it Diazony Purple and... I do believe even with Windsor Newton, it's diazonine purple, basically the same color. And uh, the, just uh, again for the folks that don't necessarily know, the Gamlin had well Dick Blick has a 40% off sale on their Gamlin paints and other products. I will try and get some of those if I can. Oh, let me see. Ah, no why how are you doing? And actually yes, like like you said, not not joining in four hours into it. Cause that, is that about where this was when you were able to join in last night where he was he was mostly pretty far along there. Oh, let's see. Uh pun expected going back to Blick this weekend to get some Terra Rosa and some Blick brushes. Yeah, the uh these definitely have been really handy. And also, you know, the, the quadruple zeros really are fantastic. I think we still have, yeah, we still got our quadruple zero over here. Love those. Might just have to get me some more. They just have to keep my stock going because who knows when we're going to wipe out their stock because that's what we do here. We're the stock breakers. And Nessie, the, these Corvus Cabal guys, they're interesting to say the least they're interesting to put together in a way that is more interesting maybe than you would like now i finally uh armored wolf sent me some pictures of oh there's a uh there's a uh crow's foot right there that bird is hopping mad that's all i can say now as as far as the you know the Object source lighting goes. I was showing was at the scions of whatever, scions of flame or something like that. We're definitely gonna have to get some of those because every single one of them is walking around with flamey stuff. So we're gonna have to dive in on that. There's there's no way those scions of flame. Of course, 
we won't make that fire color. We'll have to make that some other color for sure. Definitely have to make that another some other different color. Uh, let's see. Oh, TJ's in the house. Where's TJ? Oh, just got a, a tiny tardy, so no push for me. Just a virtual round with those who see this. Oh, hey, Sky King. How are you doing? Uh, let's see. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I think we're all caught up now. So I do believe we got ourselves uh, a, a raid last night into avocado kids that vaulted him to his not a partner to his affiliate status so thanks everybody for, for that was there to take part in that because that that was a raid of significance and then of course the raid that we did last well i think it was earlier this week for uh, draconic visions that also was able to get him to his affiliate status so I want to just thank everybody that, that stuck around for those raids. Uh, look at that. See how easy it is. So we got the, that purple sitting there already. All we got to do, I mean, we just throw some lighter paint on top of it. Boom. Just let it do its own thing. It's like magic. It's just like magic. It doesn't get much better than that. Not doing great. To, oh, got your big uh, your blick brushes now. Did you get mostly the triple zeros, or did you get uh, a little bit of a mix? And of course, were you were you able to get any of the elusive zeros, short handle or long? It doesn't matter because those are certainly in short supply now. At least according to what we all heard, twenty twenty one is when those get restocked. Now let's start to work in, let's not be shy about working in a little bit of our cobalt blue here, not cobalt blue, sorry, phthalo blue. Actually, that, that I'm going to have to start bringing out some cobalt blue here. It's been a while. Oh, look at this, look at that lovely little color right in there. Yeah. Doesn't that just shoot a little bit of life into that? We're not going to put that over here because, well, we're hoping for some reflection there let's get a touch of that down here too let's get a little bit of that over here and who knows we might even go back to those song of ice and fire guys and do a little bit of the sky earth non-metallic on some of the shields it all depends who knows heck i've completely forgotten that it's friday i thought it was some other day like wednesday because, yeah, I just can't remember anything anymore. Like, quite literally, can't remember anything anymore. Oh, let's see, I got a mix, but mostly the triple zero. Ah, uh, the, the zero last order. Yeah, uh, no, 2021. I think January 11th, 2021 is the next restock. Courtesy of us. Uh, pun expected. Let's see, does it just not matter if a brush is made for oils? Uh... Oh, hey, Bethany, how are you doing? Ah, oh, boy, you're lucky. You're lucky. Look what you get saved from. You get saved from this. There's no object source lighting here. Actually, not on this guy. There's not on this guy. I can't say that there's, well, me, maybe this guy has some. Maybe he has some. But pun expected, there is no such thing as that. Now, there might be brushes that you would rather use for watercolors, but... I mean, this this is listed as a water... All the brushes that I use are listed as watercolor brushes. I, I don't... Uh, because an oil brush... Boy, I wish I had one here. An oil painting brush is going to be a gigantic filbert brush that's hard as nails. And as we've talked about before, pun expected, any brush loves oil paint. What brushes absolutely hate are acrylic paints. Because look at all that junk in the ferrule. That's after trying to clean it twice. That's what destroys brushes, is the nasty acrylic paint. The oils don't do that because, well, they don't get down in the ferrule. Now, uh, let's see. Interested to see how you're going to unify the rainbow colors you are throwing down. 
Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how that works. Pun expected. All right, uh, and there's really nothing different than what we did on this guy right here. All the colors are the same. It's just, and you can see a little bit easier here by looking at this side. So the side that's not affected by any of the object source lighting is looking very much like the colors here. And just like here, a lot of the same colors going into this one. And remember, we're not jumping right to those super atomic highlights or anything like that. That's that's We're not jumping anything like that. We're actually going to go, if anything, we're going to go darker. We're going to go darker here with a little bit of our indigo. We're going to mix that with some of our, not brown matter, alizarin, some of our, we need to get some dark over here too, yeah. Some of our Van Dyke brown. So we're making, we're going to darken that side. We're going to lighten this side. And we're going to use just a pinch of our cadmium yellow deep for that. Going to get a touch of our terra rosa here. Uh, let's see, I have a question. Oil paints are proven difficult to buy where I am. Uh, but now I swear someone else has mentioned those before. As long as it's a name brand, right? Because I had never, and I've used oil paints for way too many years. I'd never heard of these guys before, ever. And I'd never heard of Williamsburg, ever. I'd never heard of these guys before. And and now these are a decent quality paint. Uh, but they basically what you'll... You know, if you're getting a, a set of 10 for 5 bucks or something like that, then, well, that's going to tell you that those are going to be subpar. Now, a set of 10 that costs you $60 is not necessarily going to be the best in the universe. But it, it's basically just don't go super cheap. Um, you don't have to go super expensive. But if those Georgians are not super cheap, like $5 for 20 of them or something like that, even if it's 20 something bucks, uh, think about the Wintons that I got. That's all they were. It was about 20, 26 bucks for all of all 10 of those. So, yeah, it doesn't have to be super expensive. You know, let's see. Aussie's working on my light touch with the brush when it comes to oils. Yeah, you know, honestly, there are maybe some exercises that you could do. Just that, uh, well, you know, obviously, have your hands like this, just have a piece of paper. And, and just kind of do some exercises. Just do little exercises like this on a piece of paper or something like that. Just kind of get your hand used to the motion there. Oh, let's see. TJ, eager to see oil and oil miniature in person compared to an acrylic. Uh, well, TJ, uh, they really, they don't look any different, really, than acrylic painted stuff. Uh, I'm just, uh, well... Now, obviously, here there's going to be a color difference because, well, I use different colors. But you can especially tell there on the blades. I mean, those look really similar. Actually, you can watch both of these. These are both on the YouTube channel right here. This one was done with oils, but no fluorescence. This one was done with acrylics, but with the fluorescent green. And ironically enough, this is actually brighter. Uh, let's see, the Georgian Ardila Rowney. Uh, not much I can get either. It is under 30 or over 100. That doesn't surprise me because the Holbein stuff for me is really expensive, like super expensive. So that that doesn't necessarily surprise me that those are expensive. But uh, try just a couple of the Daimler Rownies or whatever whatever that is, or and and see yeah, or Daler Rownie. Sorry. Give it a shot because I think other people have used them. Again, I don't know. I don't remember what the results were with them. But in, in any case, you'll be, well, you'll be set for a long time with the oils. If just getting that one set. Now, see, even right away, look at look what that's starting to do. Bring out that metal so so quick here. So quick. Look at all the nifty little reflective things we can start working in here only only so much though 
because at a certain point, and then we ran into this a lot last night, it was, okay, we can paint, we can paint, we can paint. Well, now, now we got to stop. We have to stop, give this a rest, move on to something else. Move somewhere else on that miniature, and then just kind of work your way around back to it. And so we're going to get some of that phthalo blue in here. Now this is definitely, we want some lighter stuff happening here. We're going to take that off-white yellow, mix it with some of this green over here. Some of this green. Oh, hey, Miss Half Damage, how are you doing? Uh, I gave your, I think I put a, <laughs> a third coat of spray on the, on the, on the half size bus there. And I've got all the original packaging is obviously going to be part of it. The one difference is <laughs> she's going to be wrapped in toilet paper because I don't want the, the original packaging to be rubbing up directly against the paint. So I've... <laughs> Next week, you will have some toilet paper to unwrap, but that's just that. Think of it as gift wrapping. It's gift wrapping that you can use. It's environmentally friendly gift wrap. Ah, see, look at how that just kind of mixing there. We're getting all these nice little kind of rough edges right here. Uh, let's see, Amazon has a, a set of three AIT triple zeros. Ah, okay, well, I think that, that, that's, uh, that is one Australian to another trying to help each other out there. So we will let them do their thing. As we just kind of start to add some more greens, some more whatevers here. Oh, how's about some of the... We were actually using this to highlight some of our fiery flamey stuff is that okay that is uh well i'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be i know it's not feathers though so it can maybe be something besides bluish gray well actually well aside from things that are half the side of the size of a human head and weigh almost 20 pounds hopefully everything else is going okay and we got, oh, we got the Roy experience in the house. How are you doing, Roy? Yeah, let's get uh, one of this green. We're actually going to mix some of that cerulean blue in there, too. And then we'll go in with some of our, that crazy pinkish flesh color, too. You can still see some of the pre-glaze mixing into that. We're going to make sure we get some of that crazy bluish green color into our feathers here, too. Now, look at, look how that's turning all that very dark we have to go back here we got to get some fresh paint hit some more of this crazy greenish color up here and then we'll maybe get some some more cerulean in there too and this uh, skin tone maybe not quite so much of the magenta there Trying to see just how much of that shows. There's really no face to speak of there. Let's get some lights on, on the armor here. We'll just use this to almost make it like a crazy greenish color here. That cadmium yellow light essentially mixing with some of the indigo that's in the brush. Going to go in here with some of our cerulean blue because I'm gonna say that's maybe metal right there yeah there's so much metal in other places we'll just call that metal too a little more of our phthalo blue is going to work its way in here That's something that could have been interesting. I don't think I really had a, a straight-up phthalo blue when I was painting that first uh, Karakalila bust there. That could have been really interesting to see the impact that would have had. Uh, let's see. I think we're all... Oh, and there's, there's Lady B. Speaking of the cerulean blue stuff. Just adding some more of my blues over there. 
Speaking of, let's get some darks. We've been going with some of the lighter stuff. Let's work in a couple of darks here. Um, you know what? That is that gonna? I just have to work this out. I, oh yeah, that's gonna be darker. Then that will be more of a mid tone. This we want to get some darks over here. Then we're going to try and work in some reflected light on the other side. That's going to be our crazy little, as we call it, faded ultramarine. The oils version of faded ultramarine. We'll hit some of the some of the trousers here with it. Still haven't quite determined what the heck that is supposed to be. What, what sort of metal is that, or if it's even metal, I don't know. I do not know. Let's see what we can do here on these little guys. Let's start to really hit this edge here. Set the edge. Just like you're a linebacker, you got to set that edge. No break in containment. Let's get a little bit more of our lights up here. And we'll let that, that's another thing where it's that other type of contrast, right? It, it's we want things to be a little bit sharper there. And I'm just going to move my camera down just a pinch here. And I think that will let us get a little bit closer to this. There we go. Oh, hey, Drax, how are you doing? So, Drax, this was a, this was an unusual day for you, a, a, the day off, because I'm in the other room. I'm trying to do something, and all of a sudden I hear Kathy say, hey, Drax. And I went, what? So, yeah, that was... That was it was like a daytime a daytime Drax sighting. It was it's like one of these rare elusive things that happens. Now, I think it's now been caught on film somewhere, and, and biologists across the the world they're they're analyzing the footage. To, was that a Drax in the daytime? Yeah, it was. Uh, I was just like, wait, wait a minute, what? I'm thinking. It, it's got to be later in the day than I think it is then. I started I started looking at clocks thinking, well, maybe it's it's later than I thought. Just going to pop a little bit of my yellows there and look at how that just uh, blends so nice with what's already there. So we're already getting all kinds of fun colors on this. Oh, let's just, why not add magenta to the mix because why not? So we'll just get some of that purple matter. There we go. Uh, it's not going to, people aren't going to look at that and say, look at that magenta right there. They're just going to see that as gray. They will, however, see it as a more interesting gray. Which is kind of important. Now, this is just going to have to be dark right here. Otherwise, we got no contrast there, which means this is going to have to be also lighter. We're going to take some of our faded ultramarine, otherwise known as blue-gray. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's literally the name of the color. It's, it's from Holbein, and it's just called blue-gray. Now, yeah, mostly keeping up with me. That that's definitely a full time job. I wonder if Kathy's package came in. She's been waiting all day for that Gundam thing to show up, and I don't know if it has or not. Now, here's a. This is something that we've been doing a little bit more often here. We're taking some of this umber, using it as a glaze. It's not something that we used to do, but we're doing it now. I guess see if she didn't get her package. So we're going to get some of our darker glazes here of umber into a few places. It's so weird. This is, and it happens a lot. I mean, it happened with the acrylics too, but sometimes you just, 
there's there's a color like this that got relegated to early usage, you know, just for pre-glazing, never really for something later on in the process, and now it's it's back to being utilized later on in the process. I'm probably you're probably going to see it a lot for uh, skulls like this, for getting some nice little glazy things going on in there. So yeah, that umber stuff you'll be seeing that more often, for sure. Uh, let me see. Oh, hey there. Hey, Vel uh, uh, Velfera. Sorry about that. Already, already stumbling over words. Haven't been at this very long and already stumbling over words. Ah, look at that nice little, little glaze right there. We're going to do some of that over here, too. Then we're going to just blend some of that together a bit more I don't think we're I was tempted to do like the whole blood drip thing but I don't think we're gonna do that on this one here I think we'll take a pass on that maybe we do need however this need some lights going on and we are going to Take that sort of thalo blue mixed with our white. And it's not enough to just have kind of a transition from here to here. We need to actually have some striations into this. Okay, ah, that's just going to be skin right there. All right, good to know. Good to know. Let's uh, get the paint out of this brush here. Let's start moving some of this around. Get a nice fade into there. Then we are going to need some reflected light over here we have not a lot happening back here so let's get some it's a little bit of our ochre it's not really meant to be gold or anything like that we're just uh, again we're just working in some reflected light some different colors here now here's the nifty that's that same sort of bluish green color I think that was the thalo blue mixed with our berry white green otherwise known as barite green and we're gonna hit this so uh, yeah nice little nice little touch of our reflected light in here do that on this side over here too oh hey cool gray how are you doing yep TJ that's why we always uh, Express appreciation for our intrepid moderator because now the that thing of throwing up those links all those times when people say where's the link where's the link that's he immediately he's got all that stuff at the ready and he makes sure that that is up on screen so we definitely want to make sure to thank our moderator who is working really really hard. I mean, it, I'm just sitting here painting figures. That that's the easy part. That's the easy part. Here, let's uh, get some of our lights working in here too. That's gonna have to be darker, but that I think is going to be Van Dyke brown instead of just more indigo blue. Yep. Because now that's going to stand out. If there's just blue, blue, blue everywhere, that's we're not gonna get much of a nothing's gonna stand out. So we're just we're getting more of a transition there on the back of or oh, whatever that is. Don't know what it is. Just uh I know it's a weapon of some sort. Beyond that, not so much. Uh, let me see. Oh, I'm uh doing good cool gray. Just uh it is hard to believe that this week has already expired. Uh, in my brain, it's still Tuesday or something. I have no idea what the heck happened here. That n Most of the things that were supposed to happen this week have not been able to happen. So, as always, we will hope that happens next week. <laughs> It's sort of like Pinky and the Brain. Their plan every night is to take over the world. And then so it is the next night. And so it is the next night. 
I'm hoping to at some point here avoid the pinky in the brain effect. Ah, there we go. Yes, and, and, and folks, be sure to go go visit the Armored Wolf Etsy page and, and just the, even just the Instagram. Check out Armored Wolf on Instagram and just so, show some serious ad admiration for the art in those dice bags. Like the, I think some of you guys saw the Night Lord's bag last night. Be sure to head on over there now. Uh, it, the Salamander's bag, that will, I'm sure, be posted at a certain point here because I saw some of the photography on that bag. And uh, the metal work on that is amazing. Now what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna try and have a chain of highlights that runs, well, middle tone slash highlights that kind of runs from here down to here. I, we just gotta determine what are we using. But see, I got that green in there. I'm kind of liking that, that green. So we're gonna take some of this off-white yellow. We'll let it mix with that. And remember, this is a little bit lighter than we ultimately want it to be because it's going to be mixing with what's there. Now I gotta go back, gotta get some more. Now Ozzy just ordered mine. Ah, there you go. So Ozzy, what, uh, what did you get? Which, uh, which chapter did you get? Because now I gotta know Ah, there we are. That's better. And uh, I think some of the things we're going to be doing into November, well, October, November, December, is we will be painting up some dice bags here on the channel, which will be super convenient because then <laughs> our moderator can actually have some other, can have those links, like, uh, instead of just like, okay, here, you can say, yeah, this is this is where all this stuff's coming from. Now look at that lovely little quadruple zero round. Look at that. And look at all the lovely little tiny lines that we can do in oils. So much easier with the oils than with the acrylics. As in a lot easier, as in insanely easier. Uh, let's see, my phone is spitting and sputtering, can't catch up with the stream. Oh, I should still be on here uh, at uh, midnight, numbskull. Unless something weird happens, I, I should still be here at midnight. So I will catch you then. Uh, a little, little bit of a light there. Oh, what the heck. Let's just hit those knuckles for right now. It's so weird. That looks so very sci-fi right there. Uh, I'm sure maybe that's supposed to be some kind of carving in that, but it just kind of has sort of a Necromunda sort of like a vent of a power weapon sort of a look to it. And we're just going to hit some of our edges on whatever these things are. So many dudes are walking around with these things. I know the my my cipher lords have a bunch of those things not quite sure what the heck they are i think they actually even throw some of that stuff around i don't think these guys chuck those around now uh, it's the only stipulation is it uh, is for a dragon symbol okay all right let's uh Get some more lights on whatever those are. I'm not sure if those spikes are metal or not. I'm not really sure that it matters all that much. I will get some lighter stuff here on the, the skull, but as always, we don't want these to be the that bleached skull. Look, we want to have some staining on these. And if you want to see how these guys were based, I do believe it was a... An episode last week, you can go back and watch that. We were, we were doing all of the basing on these guys. So again, just getting some reflected light into here. Before we go back in with some of our more juicy highlight. All 
Uh, I gotta remember that that's actually skin tone. That's not supposed to be metal. Here I'm thinking that's metal, but this is obviously some kind of, it seems like borrowed pieces of armor just kind of cobbled together. We need a little reflected light over here and over here. And then we're going to have to get some of our Terra Rosa in there to actually make that belt. And you see that kind of circular scumbling motion there? That's what's going to give us that nifty little blending that that's happens. Here, let's get some of our ochre in here. We got another one of these crazy little bird skulls going on. Let's do that. And then we're going to have to sort out some of these her, her blades right here. Now let's take a look at his hood. I think we need to... Oh yeah, see, I want to get some of that red into there, some more of the darks, but we have to let that paint... We have to let that cure for just a bit. Now let's take some of our off-white yellow Speaking of some of these skulls up here, let's get this guy. Now, at this point, the paint is most definitely thicker. We did not thin this down. A lot of our thinner because, remember, thick over thin. We've been working pretty darn thin in the beginning here. That means we've got to just always keep track of, in our just little mental note, you know what, I think I've been working awful thin here. Now i got to go the opposite way. And now here, let us take some of our umber, some ivory black here, and let's just get uh, some darks in here. We have a lot of middle tones and lights around this hair and everything. Maybe we'll go a bit uh, darker with that. Might even let some of that dark get onto these, well... Fingers, which aren't fingers. It, it sort of can, TJ, at, at not really because it is just too, it's so powerful. Now, if you had one of these with the, that's because these things run down real fast. But you can see just how powerful it is. But this is really more for projecting the light. The reflected light is just a matter of you kind of have to just be aware of that and just kind of mental awareness of that, like right in here. So she's standing on this green marble. Well, if this is facing the green marble, well, guess what? You got to have the green there. We got here on her, on her armor there. It's facing towards this green. Well, guess what? You need to have green there too. That armor is facing towards this, so you're going to have to reflect that color. And basically anything is going to have reflected light. Even here on my finger, now you can't see it here because obviously where the lights are, but there's a band of dark here and then under here is reflected light because it's bouncing off of this and hitting the underside of my hand. I think this also has, yep. Yeah. So you can kind of see how there's there's more of the reflected light over here. You can see the, the green bouncing around. Now that's obviously your object source lighting there. More of an object source lighting. Belly Cosplay and Kitten, how are you doing? And folks, be sure to give Cosplay and Kitten the follows. Because follows are free and follows are fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see. Did you ever tackle any old school out of print minis? Oh geez, two guns. I had to do an entire army of thousand sons of figures that seemed like they were done in the 1700s. I mean, they were a long freaking time ago. They were ancient. They were really, really old and out of print. Hey, Dr. Feedgood, how are you doing? Uh, cool, great. These are the Warcry Corvus Cabal. So see this logo right here? It doesn't matter what I'm working on now, unless I forget. So if this says Reaper, like it did when I was working on these guys, that'll let you know what at least what the name of the company is or the name of the game system. So when I was doing the Song of Ice and Fire stuff, right, over here it said Song of Ice and Fire. So this is a little kind of indicator all the time of what it is that I'm working on here. Uh, let me see. So uh, Cosplay and Kitten, I just, I love the oils so much. It's just so much easier to work with. 
and actually the more I use the oils the more difficult acrylics get well they're just they're not cooperative they're always fighting you whereas the oils are just kind of what do you need what do you wish for me to do for you and I just say I would like you to do this and the oils say why well, yes I will do that whereas the acrylics are more like ah oils are more like a dog and the acrylics are more like a cat so the cat generally doesn't care if you're alive or dead as long as you give it food and clean that litter box whereas the dog is always like right there it's like uh, what do you want me to do want to go for a walk you want to play you want to play stick what do you want to do <laughs> that's the oils and and uh so I, I know I just had to throw the cat reference in there for you too. I had to do that. So hopefully, hopefully the cats have been doing well also. Uh, cosplaying kitten. It now the more you use them, the shorter the drying time is going to get because you just use less and less paint. Like uh, well this one here, there's parts of this that are bone dry already, totally bone dry, and I was just working on this one last night. Oh, okay, cosplay! Have you ever tried any of the Warcry figures? Because that I don't know some of these. I think you would you'd have some fun with. Uh, let me see. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Yeah, the oils. They what? They don't talk to you. Also, your your brushes don't talk to you. I I just I don't understand. I had a riveting conversation with with the the bedroom door just the other day. I mean, it was it was quite the debate back and forth. Just just what what does closed mean? And, and if a door closes in the house and no one hears it, does it still make a sound? We we debated that back and forth for hours. I believe the door won. Sadly, so yes, I, I I did lose the door debate to the door. Now I'm gonna get a couple. Of, wow. Okay. There's nothing actually there. I went to paint something that's physically not there. It's actually way back there. No wonder I'm debating doors. All philosophical like. Yeah. Let's get some lights on his face here too. But it's not enough to just get that lighter. We need to get a little bit of some kind of pink in here. So, shall we grab some of that? Let's give him the old pink nose. Let's give him the old pink up here too. And then we're going to start pushing that around. Uh, let's see, I talk to my drawings when I'm working on them sometimes. I've yelled at the paint. Does that count? Yeah, I... Uh, Kathy discusses her recipes with the recipe when when she's looking for or what I just uh, making the biscuits yesterday I'm hearing her talking and I thought she was asking me something like where is this or where is that and no it was just a it was a debate with the recipes now uh, <laughs> speaking of cooking some things I was gonna lurk while he's cooking them hot wings ah hot wings there's some hot wings, hot feet too. Hot feet, hot wings. No aesthetic overdrive, how are you doing? Yeah, I mean, well, of course, then there's all the debates with, with the stuffed animals that happen all the time. Because, well, they're always clamoring for cookies, which, oh, there might be some cookies made on saturday oh tomorrow yes there should be some cookies made well it's 61 degrees out here something like that so i think using the oven is not really going to heat up the house very much or if it does we'll be desperately standing around the oven trying to absorb some of that heat so yeah cosplay and kid you have to you have to talk to those drawings it's always important to communicate to your materials. So look, just to pop in a couple of little lights there, it's so easy to get these tiny little details with the oils. 
and be darned if now it's super difficult with the acrylics. I'm still trying to figure out if that's actually armor. You know what? No, I'm going to say we're going to make a change to that. Maybe not. Maybe we will just leave it this way. Ah, that could be int Okay, yeah. That could be interesting still. And we're looking, again, we don't want to use that that pinkish color. We're looking for this magenta color here. Literally taking some of this crazy lighter magenta and highlighting, well, the green skin tone with it. Because, hey, why not? Why not? Any other? Okay, there's a couple of skin tone areas here that we're sort of missing. Although, I, maybe I don't want these to be super light. Maybe not making those super light. We are going to get a little bit of this again. The magenta out over here. Not so much about making it lighter, just shifting that color a teensy bit. We need some of our lighter white over here too. So let's grab some of our titanium white. Set an edge on this thing. There we go. Oh, actually, it may have missed half damage if you are still in the still in lurking in the chat or something like that. I, when it's a, something as crazy as that, I always kind of shoot some pictures of how it was put in the box, so it might be a little bit easier to unravel the puzzle. It is kind of an ingenious system that that George created. It's actually this very soft foam that literally like cradles the head like a brace. It's pretty. I was I was very impressed with it when it showed up here. So, and I say, oh look at that! Look at see, we got that almost like a greenish yellow here. Then we've got that terrorosa next to it, and then we just boom that one little pop of the bright light there. Man, what that just did! One literally one stinking brush stroke is all it took there. Now this. Needs to have something more going on than just it, it was neat what, what what I tried to put there, but it's not really wasn't really reading as a reflection. Now here we're we're scumbling this around. That might read more as a reflection there now. I think might even do a pinch more on that. And we're just gonna scumble this. To make that a little bit lighter. Now we're going to take some of our darker color. Work that in here. Like you do. There we go. Yeah, I think that to me now that's reflecting more of this armor right here. It, it's sort of like that, that whole crazy infinity mirror thing that I keep talking about where the armor colors are just sort of bouncing off of each other this way and that. Oh, let me see. Oh, you had Grater's ice cream. Holy smokes. Well, I'll catch you later, Kid Dragon Eye. Have a good one. Oh, let me see. Painting Druid tried my hand at some OSO on the cloak. How did that go, Static Overdrive? Oh, thank you so much, Clover. Uh, look at that. He's going to get it, and she's going to chase him away. And he's like, it's always got to be birds. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let me see. Wait a minute. Uh, I think we got the... So, AI yeah, Static Overdrive. I hope that came out good there. And say, do you ever show your workstation because you easily access everything? Uh, yeah, Sky King. You finally cookies, huh? So TJ, this is something that has been evolving, oh my gosh, for the last two years. And then once once I started doing Twitch, this entire room had to be reconstructed. Quite literally, I spent, I, I probably spent, if you just took the total amount of hours and just put one hour next to another hour next to another hour, I've spent at least five days just of doing nothing but trying to find the right type of 
stuff to have here furniture wise change i just changed the layout again yesterday and that's still in the process of changing it's literally in the process of changing right now i just had to kind of stop doing that so that i could get these streams in and that's uh i was just i just came up with a formula before i started here tonight that basically figure that for every hour that i'm streaming here there's about between 20 to 23 minutes of other time spent working on this area making images setting screens moving stuff around just so that i have stuff on at the ready to show people and it always is changing because well th those props go away just like i have to redo this thing because next week this prop goes away and i won't have that one anymore there's other stuff that i have that i use as props and those are going to be going away because well they get sent off and and that's where i have to make sure that i've now got pictures of those or replacements some kind of a new prop or whatever so use that formula for every so like tonight if it if tonight is a 10 hour stream which it, i don't think it's going to be you have to assume there was at least two hours plus of me just getting stuff ready in some way shape or form it's definitely i wish it could just be a me sit down and turn on the camera thing but it is definitely unfortunately not quite so tidy so hopefully that kind of answers the question there now uh, let's see wwwd that was uh oh let's see Huh, I, I need me a miniature. It's, oh, thanks, Clover. I appreciate that. Uh, I think it's looking okay. I'm starting to see new angels and reflections. Uh, as long as it's not uh, the weeping angels, right? Wasn't that what it was? Weeping angels or whatever in Doctor Who for a while. You know what? Let's just make that darker for now. And, oh, I think actually this guy, his maybe his eyes have been... I think they've uh, they've been snacking on his eyes here. Oh, that's it. This guy's snacking on his eyes, I think. I mean, they are tasty snacks, so it doesn't surprise me. I, I guess eyeballs are sort of like the gummy bears for, for crows. Yeah, let's get a little bit darker on this. Uh, okay, these are feathers here. Still going to try and figure out what the heck those are. We're also going to get ourselves a couple more darks in here. Oh yeah, TJ, it just uh, it's it is like setting up a classroom. It's so funny because when I used to teach and do pastel demos, watercolor demos, that sort of thing, I used to have to do the demo two or three times. Not not to memorize or anything like that, just to see okay, how long is this going to take? can i get this can i do this in this amount of time knowing that there's going to be questions this that whatever now let's get to see we got the blue over here let's see if we can't sneak in some of this crazy magenta color again so here's some of our magenta let's just get a little of this off-white yellow yeah it's a uh, old cosplaying kitten uh are you going to be doing any more Blood Bowl teams? I meant to ask. I completely forgot. I saw your Blood Bowl team there. And I was wondering, was that just a, you know, one of those teams that just kind of spoke to you? Or were you going to try it? Because they, well, there's a bunch of new Blood Bowl teams out there. So I wasn't sure if you were going to mess around with some of those. Huh. Somebody has to remind me to get pictures of my Mimes of Moria Blood Bowl team. I keep forgetting that. I keep forgetting the Mimes of Moria. How the heck can I be doing that? Oh, I'm also getting some magenta in on the feathers here, too. Maybe even a touch of magenta here on the armor in a couple places. Absolutely loved my Mimes of Moria. Yes, they were street mimes and they were goblins. Uh, let me see. Uh, as a teacher, fully understand. Weeping angels, the creepy ones. There we go. Uh, let's see, I have students face to face. Running for the first time in close to 200 days. That's going to be 
that will be a challenge just because something that used to be such a familiar thing is all of a sudden why are we all in the same room together so I hope that all goes well I might have to make those maybe darker there's an awful lot of values that are starting to creep closer together so we may need to separate those and pull some of those values apart So we just that, that was a little bit almost like a glazy thing right there. That was darn near a glaze right there. Uh, let me see. Uh, the Blood Bowl team, I did. I was a commission. Okay. But that one, that one looked really neat. So, congratulations on that. That was a really f spectacular result on those guys. I'd, I've, I will not be playing Blood Bowl ever again, but I think, well, I've painted the lizards. Uh, what I would like to do is actually just get some of the goblins and actually redo the Mimes of Moria Blood Bowl team just using the new goblins. Okay, we're going to get a couple lights over here, and now... And as, as much as I enjoy that that kind of a cool or the cool gray versus the warmer gray, we also need to get some more striations, and that's kind of a I want to get some more complexity into those reflections there. Let's grab some of this greenish color here, and we're going to try and do some of that here. Quite literally, like it's reflecting some other other stuff just besides. Just besides the four. Oh, speaking of reflections, we need some reflected light over there. So we put that in position. Now we are going to move that around. You can see we're just going to go right at the edge of that. Any brush can be a blending brush. So I think now we've got a n nice little range. See some of that blue that's in there. All right. What about what about our our bird that's hopping mad because he's missing a foot? You know what? I am gonna play with this warmer, almost like a reddish gray over here. So I'm I'm taking some of my magenta grayish color, mixing it with a little touch of that ivory blacks, and keeps it somewhat darker but now it has a little bit of a warmer tint to it and we'll just give him some impression of again I'm just assuming that the crow's leg would be more not necessarily black but it just would be darker I'm going to take some of my ochre here we sure need to lighten up some parts of this belt. It's the one thing that's a different color from everything else that's around it. I had to thin it down, and that's just uh, using my thinner. Does not take much of it, takes very little of that. So here we go. I mean, this is the extent that we were using this last night. And the last night before that, so this is all the thinner I'm using. That's a that's a water bottle cap. That is all I'm using. There's no vast amounts of or gallons of toxic thinner laying around or anything like that. Hey Root, how are you doing? No, oh, thanks. Uh, we're just she's going to be joining the ranks of some of the other other uh, hot hot birds right here. So there, there's a nice little trio that we've got going on. That's, uh, yes, it's, it's, that's where the thinner comes from. It comes from a magic unicorn. Yes. And it, it's, it just, it's, uh, look, it exudes rainbows, right? It's, it's a magic unicorn. It's thinner from a magic unicorn that just exudes rainbows and paints your miniatures for you. And speaking of painting miniatures for me, that can't all be that level of 
light. So we're taking actually some of that interesting little greenish, green and thalo blue mix. Ah, that's, ooh, look at that. Yep. I don't even know if it looks any darker to you guys, but it didn't just darken it up. It changed. Now there's a color there. There was nothing but white there before. Well, off-white. Now it's got now it's got some color going on and that is a nice little foil to the to the purple that's over here so that was that was a nice little move right there let's get some some mid-tones here on our speaking of crows hmm. contemplating more of the this lighter warm gray in some places here maybe on his beak now let's see this group just needs a scarecrow shaman oh, that, oh i need some it needs some pumpkins that's what it needs but there's a there's another guy over here somewhere where the heck did he go so there's this guy and there's still two other ones that are sitting around somewhere else. They're they're not attached to their bases yet. So there's there's this dude here. Or actually no lady, sorry. I just I looked at that face and I said, well, that's not very dude like and then I saw some extra bits on there. I said, well that's definitely not very dude like, so that is definitely some lady. Which it seems like the the war cry figures they I don't know if there's really a 50-50 mix. I think it's mostly male figures, but there's at least usually one or two female figures, I think, in each warband. I know there was at least, I think, three female figures in the Cypher Lords. Ah, uh, look at that. Now we're getting a little bit of our... See that? A little bit of that warmer gray now. in those wings starting to bring out some... Yeah, some more shape there. Uh, let's see. The Houston, Texas, been virtual for five weeks. And the district have been back, but school is still in the hot zones. Oh, a builder of the pyramid. So let's just grab a few things that sort of signify. First thing of the painting pyramid. What's that all about? So about seven-ish years ago. We did a Kickstarter campaign with instructional painting videos. And one of the first, most, the, the cornerstone of all the techniques was shaded base coat. And that's kind of what we started doing here. That's what we were doing here. But what have we started to add to it? We've been starting to add our non-metallic metals. On some of these, we were adding object source lighting, obviously. Freehand, the non-metallic, oh, skin tones, right? We've been doing some skin tones there. We're going to be doing some skin tones also on this guy. You know, when you got something like this, you have freehand here on the marble. Colors, all these things. Well, the painting pyramid tries to bring all of that stuff together. So before time itself, there was the pyramid. Quite literally, at least for me, there was this. So look at that bottom level. What do you see there? You got your shaded base coat, non-metallic metals, freehand object source lighting. I guess I could add a basing there too. But then you get up, you start to see things like your color theory, flesh tones, glazing. Those those four things at the bottom, those are pretty much in everything. Flesh tones, not necessarily quite, because not everything has a skin tone to it. But you know, color theory, take this uh, purple right here. There's some reddishness in there. There's some blue. It's almost like a greenish blue in some areas. Yet when you look at that, it's just purple. But there's very few parts of that are actually purple. That, that's kind of where your color theory starts to come in. That's why I did all of those, uh, those color swatches for one of the recent tutorial videos for the Patreon page. Now we are going to take some of that burnt umber again here, and we're going to try some some glazy things over here. Yeah, actually, well, I was thinking uh, 
you know, if Kath, now that Kathy's got the Photoshop thing running again, maybe she could make me some kind of a, a, a nicer vector file of it or something like that, and then we could put that on T-shirts. There, anyway, that's a little bit, little bit darker there. Now let's grab some of our Terra Rosa. Our thing. Oh, hey, Baron, how are you doing? Yeah, uh, definitely, TJ. I hope that all goes well. Uh, let's get some just to see that a little pinch of that in here. Just a hint of that reddishness. We've got a lot of uh, almost greenish yellows there, which means that little hint of that kind of orangey skin tone, that's going to have a big impact. Yeah, definitely, definitely take care of yourself. Uh, let us know how that all works out. See, I just toned that down too on this part of his beak. It can't just all be that same lighter color. It's just that's got no no shape to it whatsoever. A little bit of that burnt umber there on the end. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of nice there. A little bit of a little more of a transition to that. Maybe that fur is not quite so light. So, yeah, let's get some lighter stuff on this purple here. And again, we're you notice we're not mixing a purple color so much as just kind of taking something that's lighter here, putting it on, and then just mixing it instead of all of these crazy layers. Why why do all this layering? That that's where. We talk to the oils and we say, that they ask us, well, what do you need? And I say, well, what I need is some light over here. But I don't want to have to paint a bunch of layers of paint. So I'm just going to take that lighter color. I'm just going to put it in place. And then I'm just going to mix it like so. We'll do the same over here. Now, if you do those lessons, explain where you are applying the shades and highlights. That's every single one, TJ. That is at the core of everything. That's what shaded base coat is. It's just like, again, what we did here, where we, we were trying to figure out where's the darks, where's the lights. That's the very first thing, because in any sort of a, a fine art painting, whatever, that's the very first thing that you are worried about, is where's the lights, where's the darks, everything else is irrelevant. None of that pretty stuff matters because if you have no lights and darks, you have no image, you got nothing. So everything begins with that shaded base coat. And then we build from there. You know, I am going to make that skin tone a little bit lighter. So again, this is another one of those things where we're trying to determine, okay, if that's going to be darker, which it should be because it's in shadow, we can't have a dark next to a dark. We could have a mid-tone next to a mid-tone if there's a dramatically different color tone or one is way more saturated than the other. But because of what we're trying to do here, color-wise or, or whatever with the skin, we don't have that, that advantage. We don't have that tool. So we have to come up with something else that we can use to try and signal that difference. So we have the, the original painting pyramid that was 53 videos. And actually five of five of those were terrain videos and 12 more were basing videos. Uh, let's see, painting is working with light and shadow. I cheat and use the Zenith or Primate as my guide and then just block in the highlight midtone shadow with the others and scumble them to blend in that transition. Uh, I asked the art teacher how she teaches that I would, uh, oh, that I would crash her class. Hey, folks, look who we got in the house, who has mustered the host of the most, and that is your Rohan right there. Let's welcome in our recently, just a brand newly minted affiliate there. So congratulations, Avocado Kids. Yeah, I, sorry that it was so many people. Uh, I, was it 90 some odd people or something like that? And I, I just, I looked and I said, well, you had, I think, five at the time. I knew you were just getting started. And I said, well, folks, you're, you're going to go over here and you are going to raid the avocado 
You are going to raid that. So I'm glad that that worked Hello, out. Little hobbits, spark my gun. Thank you so much, Next Gen Ben, for the follows. That is appreciated. Now, so there's a lot of mid-tones here, right? But even in, in that story, you can see we've got some of the magentas. we got some yellows. What happens when we do film noir and we take it all away? There's almost, look at look at this. Look at all the lights and shadows. The color is gone. There is no more color here yet. You can still see, especially over here where we've been working, there's plenty of lights and darks. And this is a, well, let's look at last night's here. So you look at him, you can clearly see there's something bright going on over here. You can see where it's casting light. But when you bring that color back, look what happens. Uh, is that insane? That is your color contrast. That's saturation kind. Look at the saturation of that. Oh, thanks, Oval. I, f I appreciate that. Or Velfera, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's been <laughs> it's been a few days, so I've already forgotten. That it just it makes a huge difference. Uh, you got something like this again. Remember the all the colors there in the robe. What happens when we take those all away? There's still plenty of lights and darks. We got reflected lights. We got all the good stuff there. But you don't have the color intensity difference, the temperature difference, right? Cool versus warm. Even here, you've got warm versus cool. You have saturated versus unsaturated. Oh, let's see. The art teacher said that she can't use rubber cement, so oils are definitely out. That's uh, I. Well, it it's uh, it's her class, her rules. I mean, it just. We were in art school for many years, and we survived using things that were way, way more toxic than anything that I've got here by a factor of a lot. And yet, we are all still alive and kicking. Now, we're just going to get a touch of, a little touch of reflective light there. Guess what? We are going to do the same thing here. So yeah, that, that is unfortunate. Let's get some more of our light under it. We're just going to position this here, and then we'll just leave it there. We'll, we'll come back at future time and start screwing around with that just like we're gonna come back into here and start doing some stuff with this oh thanks next gen appreciate that just uh that i love love messing around with the oils here they're just so much fun now for the folks that maybe haven't seen some of the other stuff that we've done here, let's uh, look at some past things. So this is some more, This you can actually watch the, the VODs of that, well, the highlights of that. So here's some things that we painted in oils like him and him. This actually was filmed for the Patreon page. He was also done almost entirely with oils, except for that last day when we had to finish him off. So here is another, this is everybody's favorite right here, uh, the Caracalila bust, also done with oils. And let's go, so more of our sisters here, also done with oil paints, the non-metallic metals, the freehand, the object source lighting, all done with the oils. And sometimes we change the genres around, so winter Soviets in oils, winter Americans, in oils and let's look at some of our dark swords here so each of these is also a tutorial for the patreon page that's five tutorials at two hours a piece we got six more here we got five more there uh, you can watch this on the youtube channel that's the owlbear family also from dark sword miniatures and we love our terrain too. So this is also part of the the original painting pyramid. Now, not these pieces. These are actually on the YouTube channel right now. But this is part of my Lord of the Rings board, and that brings us to artwork. 
So in a previous lifetime when I did 2D art, this is actually watercolors on watercolor board. More watercolors on watercolor board. You can tell I like doing my, I love my portraits. Now here's some pastels and this is the stuff, this is the stuff that's way more toxic than anything I'm using here and there is no way to protect yourself from it. So there's your pastels. And that's just regular acrylic paint. And this is always fun. So this is when I was 13 years old. This was done in oils on a big old piece of masonite. No, it was, no, it was a big old canvas. I think it was still one of the biggest canvases that I ever painted in my life was this thing. And that was done, oh my gosh, that was done with cheap, cheap oil paints and nasty thinner. Boy, it, that thing would take no time at all today. It would be so much easier to do that today than it was back then. Now, uh, let me see. Next gen. I just started minifigure paint. Okay, uh, next gen. Uh, what kind of stuff are you painting right now? Are you, are you doing the GW stuff or more Reaper type figures? Uh, let me see. Uh, it sounds like someone who has been a while will, will teach you more. <laughs> uh, let me see. You cannot use. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's a. Uh, so you have trouble keeping the tiny brush bristles, let alone doing this crazy. Oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so there is, uh, like Nessie was saying, there's there's many hundreds of hours of tutorials. Now, what was it that we said the other day? You're getting seven years worth of blooper reels because that was quite literally me trying stuff. So that you didn't have to try it and go, oh, well, that didn't, that doesn't work. Basically, that's me trying to do that for you so that you don't have to sit there and go, well, okay, if I use this and this, will it do this? Ooh, ah, ha, ha. Speaking of experiments, uh, check this out. Now, I don't know how much this is going to show on camera here, but this is for a new diorama project that's going to be happening on the Patreon page. So that is air drying clay right there. And I put it in these Woodland Scenics molds. Do I have those molds here somewhere? Ah, I think they're still in the other room. But yeah, we're going to be using these to build ourselves a nice little diorama out of here. So yeah, this was a very successful experiment. Nice and uh, it's hard, but it's still breakable, which is very cool. So yeah, that was one of those experiments that uh, worked very well. Not all experiments do. Some experiments fail horribly. And I think some folks, they just don't want to try those because, well, they're worried about that failing horribly stuff. Uh, let's see, I have some GW and grabbed the orc riding on a dire wolf. I want to have some plague marines. So I have some of my next projects that I'm well, just trying to get the figures assembled for a bunch of different Space Marine stuff, Thousand Suns, well, Rubik Marines, and trying to a, a basically create your own Space Marine chapter type of a tutorial. I'm just contemplating, eh, no, I won't mess with that, but this needs to be something here. We can't just have that, there's nothing going on there. I think we got a mid-tone here that can work. Right in that, ah, oh, there we go. Yep, that spot just needed something more. This also needs some reflected light here. We might even get a little bit of this purple into here. I'm also trying to gather things up for Orktober. So some of the, the 40k orcs, but also trying to gather, I'm going to try and assemble some Lord of the Rings orcs for Orktober because, well, Lord of the Rings, orcs are not my army, but if I'm going to do all those battle reports and stuff, well, I need, I need somebody to be fighting my other army, so we'll just, we need somebody to be the opponent. Now, we haven't done too much here. We're going to start to pick out some more some more stuff with these feathers here. Bringing in some of that blue again. 
We got the skin tone over here. We got the green. Let's uh, do some of our magenta. Again, that is purple matter. We're mixing the off-white yellow with it instead of the off-white. And here's the case where we're just going to put this here. We'll just find ourselves a, a brush that we can use for some kind of blending here. This is where we get saved all of that, all of those extra layers, right? Because now I just blended that. I literally blended magenta into green. And it did it flawlessly and smoothly. Boom. No glazing, no, no tons of layers or anything like that. Just one layer. Literally just plop that paint there. And now we're just going to push that paint around. Push this around, and now it's just going to blend in with all of that green on its own. No fuss, no muss. We like the no fuss. We don't want to fuss over things. Life is too short for fussing over things. Now, let's see, Sky King. I can't wait to see how you get air dry clay in and out of those molds. Uh, the the Woodland Scenics rubber rubber rocks molds, right? Holy smokes, it practically fell out of there on its own. That was the beauty of it because I was originally going to use Scopey, and then I said, no, A, that's a lot of Scopey. B, that's going to weigh a ton. That is going to weigh an absolute ton. I was not interested in using plaster because, well, you can only pour one piece at a time. That air drying clay, it was minutes. All of those, I did like two dozen molds in a matter of a minute. Not a minute, but in a, just like 15, 20 minutes. Because it, it just it practically falls out of there on its own by comparison to anything else. So that was spectacular. Uh, that's definitely going to form some terrain. Oh, definitely going to be terrain. You know what? I am going to grab some of this pink over here. What the heck? There we go. It just wasn't, didn't have enough impact before. Now that has some impact. And we're going to get that foot there too. Oh, that's okay. That is metal. So we'll, we'll change this again. We need to get some, some lights over here. Here, let's, uh, Grab some of Mr. Titanium White here, and we'll just pop a couple of lights here on this. They all have these little crazy uh, little blades sticking off of them or whatever these things are. Some very curious footwear they have. Oh, let's see. Uh, no, Baron, they just they fell out on their own. I didn't have to do anything. I, did, I pressed them in there, and they were... They were practically falling out as I was pressing it in there. It was really, really, really easy. That that was why, that was the whole purpose of that experiment was to say, can I press this stuff in here? And is it easier to get the heck out of these things? And it was super easy to get that out of them. So now we've got something going here. We need some even brighter touches along this edge but they have to be they can't be a line they just they can only be like these little dots here they can only be those little dots almost like a little bit of morse code there that's better okay top edge of this also needs some resolution That needs some res. We got nothing going on here. I mean, if anything, it needs some reflected light. That's better. Not quite sure what you can see of that, but we're letting this all blend with what's there. We're not going to get any kind of a super bright highlights in there because it is sort of well facing the ground, which is dark. It's a dark marble. I'll try and get a couple of 
edges caught on the top parts of that and that's about it again not too much more until we get down to our this little piece of armor right here take our little sable right here that's why it's nice having a whole bunch of these guys around because they're not just for painting they're also for moving this paint around so they make really nice fine blending brushes works so well we need to get some darker stuff going on with our little crow there so we are going to take our indigo some of our iv ivory black here and I think we're actually going to try a little bit of a pin line wash in some places see what kind of texture that's going to bring out now the thing is you, you notice we're not brushing this on we're just touching it to it and then whatever texture there is it's going to expand into that and I can see it happen in here on some of these feathers sometimes you can kind of guide it and coax it along just a bit here like so because I don't want to just keep making that lighter and lighter sometimes when in doubt add darks sometimes that's all it takes you can you can highlight the heck out of something when you're just gonna lose all of the shape there sometimes you just gotta add dark same thing I'm doing here adding more dark we had lots of lights go in there we actually need some dark we're gonna do the same over here too just working in some dark there it it's just a whole collection of middle tones there now that strong shadow does the trick uh, let's see why did you make a pink reflection on the blade again it's something that you see all the time with metal actually I'm just also trying to break up the the surfaces here so you see you've got this red here the green there when you see this from a distance any kind of purple and green when you kind of see those together your eye tends to blend them together and basically make it look gray because there's actually magenta in here too there's actually magenta in here there's also another and this is part of the book of wapple if a color goes somewhere it must go everywhere so i've been putting magenta into the skin over here uh, we've got some in the skin over here we got some down here that that I'm trying to basically put that color a little bit of it everywhere see there's gonna be some magenta over here too so I'm also trying to maintain that color harmony uh, let me see one okay we got that one there let's see Baron uh, yeah that Baron it's it was that easy it was literally just take the clay shove it in there and it pretty much just falls out I mean it wasn't it doesn't necessarily completely fall out at its own but compared to compared to the kind of coaxing that I've had to do to get stuff out of molds I'll catch you later static overdrive you got to take off oh hey Lord Zephyrus how you doing yeah that that is something that uh, I will show on another basing stream but it was just an experiment to see if it would work and that is something that's going to be part of a uh, Patreon page video because I have that whole, well, there's a, a basing uh, pledge level on the Patreon page. And I'm always trying to come up with some new basing materials and, and tricks and stuff for people. And it was just, it was literally as simple as take the clay out of the bag, kind of mash it up a little bit in my hands shove it in there press it into the mold and especially after I, I've used it once or twice the clay just again it doesn't necessarily fall out of the mold on its own but it's really 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 easy to coax it out of there let's get some of this magenta we're talking about it up here well guess what we're gonna put some down here 
because we did the same also here yes yeah, some of these yeah see there's a little bit of magenta right there on on some of these things and there's even there's even purple on the feathers up here you can look at this leather right here you can see greens there's browns there's some of your yellow right there so there's a whole even but your brain looks at that your eye looks at that and your brain just says that's tan that's leather it doesn't spot all of those individual little colors that are in there. Oh, hey, Teals, how's it going? Where's my other example of that? Here we go. So this was also done with the oils. And you can see, okay, this is, your eye says this is gold, right? All of this stuff is gold. Yet yeah, look at it's green over here. How much of this, that, look, it's, it's green over here too. There's orange over here. There's there's purple over here. Very few parts of this are actually yellow. But yet your eye looks at that and says it's gold. Same thing over here. Most of this is green. Very few parts of this are actually yellow. There's green over here, orange over here. Very little of this is actually yellow, but your your brain just kind of looks at it and says, yeah, yeah, that that's gold. That's gold. So yeah, hopefully that kind of makes a little bit of sense for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Teals, I, I, I liked, uh, it was really fantastic seeing all of the, uh, the, the infinity stuff there. Of course, the, the bike with the OSL, that was, that was quite fantastic. So folks, be sure to give Teals the follow. Follows are definitely free. Oh, let's see. Uh, uh, Midtime is calling. Well, catch you later, Velfera. Uh, let's see. Hard to believe someone adds colors like that. It's better than photo with color correction. Yeah, that's it. Well, you look at, uh, and I always keep talking about those those cosplayers, right? The the armor guys that go out into the forest. And you can see all of this stuff reflected in their armor. You, you see they reflect themselves. If they're wearing red, that red is reflected in their armor. They're reflecting the landscape around them. They're reflecting the ground. Everything is reflected all over the place. Now, so we're just getting some, some lighter doodads in here now. That's a highly technical paint term right there. You can use that. to see what's going on with the fingers there too we also need uh, speaking of reflect the light let's get a little bit of this terra rosa going oh hey luther how are you doing and grimguard how are you doing there hope everything is going well yeah actually last night because i think what i stopped here at about 10 after 4 or something like that i actually used the well it's a very cheap exercise rolling machine thing, but instead of putting 10 pound weights on my arms and trying to run for an hour, I just did that little rolling machine thing. It was better than, certainly better than nothing. Uh, we're getting a little bit more of our, our brownish color in there, which we now need to reflect onto Mr. Sword over here. That needs to be a bit lighter. I might even ooh, just steal a little bit of that. Yep, just a pinch. Just a pinch of that cadmium orange there. Just to give me something different here for whatever, whatever reason. It just feels like it. Like right here, see we got that little band of green right next to that band of the reddish color. That's a little bit of extra contrast there. The brain's not really going to notice it. It's just going to know it's there, and it's going to appreciate that it's there. See, we just... I would change it some more of these colors around like this. Too much plain stuff going on. Right next to that green, we're quite literally putting in some cadmium orange next to that. 
Now, let's see, honestly, the notches on that blade give it so much more interest. It really, there's just a whole ton of these little striations, which at first I was just kind of like, okay, great, whatever. And then I realized, like you said, yeah, that's kind of an excuse to put all kinds of neat stuff in there. Because the Cypher Lords, let me see if I can find some of these guys that have, ah, here we go. So you have the Cypher Lords, they had these really long blades, but look at all the, see we got magenta there, we've got some green there, we've got sky blue over there. You can see actually like a dark green with almost like a purple next to it there. And then we got some blue over there, so we got lots of different stuff going on. I'm going to just make sure we got some decent focus on that. Oh, thanks, Ozzy. Uh, let's see, Rex says, I need I need to paint a shiny red Iron Man soon. Oh, geez, yeah, I, that happens all the time. Uh, let me see if I can find some. Oh, well, I mean, here we go. So uh, where's our, uh, here we go. I'm looking for this one here. So we've got this, okay, shiny blue. I, I don't know if you can see it there, but see that red is reflected on the shiny blue. You see there's more red reflected. So it, this whole thing reads as blue, but look at how many places there's red. Look at that. There's more red reflected there. If it's going to be shiny, oh, look at this. There's more red reflected there, even though this clearly is very bright blue. Actually, you can watch the YouTube video on this. Thank you so much for the, let's see, oh, was it uh, Valandar the Red? Look at that. Well, Peleus comes in and he's like, the heck are you doing here? And he gets chased away. He's like, you aren't even being painted. And I still get chased away. So hopefully that answers that question, right? Thanks again, Valandar. I appreciate that. The, the subs definitely make a huge difference, especially when we're trying to get, well, like right now, you've got that, that sale going on with Dick Blick. There's a couple of, uh, oh, Al, I, oh, I think Al had to take off. But I want to try and get that the, the, the white that he was talking about. Oh, I'm glad you're doing that well there, Luthar. Ah, okay, that's good, Rex. Yeah, I, I, I always try to... So this is uh, what I mean about always having those examples on hand. Because you, just, you never know when a question's going to pop up. And I can sit here and say things. And it will sound okay. But there's nothing like actually seeing something. Where I say, look, it's like this. And I have some example there to show. The unfortunate thing. <laughs> is that it means I have stacks and stacks of miniatures just everywhere. Uh, actually, Armored Wolf saw the pictures of the new shelving unit that I just added here. Well, actually, I added two new shelving units. And every time I add something like that, it means everything's got to be moved around and shifted around because I have to, well, make room for those things. And the, 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 the big problem if my arms were 50 feet long it would be different sadly everything must be within 28 inches of me otherwise it's kind of useless so therefore all of these shelving units all have to be compressed into a certain tiny little space it's about the size of a fighter cockpit actually it's maybe less room than that and, and when I get in here, I'm just kind of like trapped in here and not really easy to move. All right, we're going to get a couple more of our lights in here just to get, indicate that that is, that's metal. If we want it to be shiny, we got to get those crazy little contrasts in there. Oh, Al is still here. Yep, that's the that's the stuff. I, I put that in uh, I put that in the cart, but I didn't get a chance to actually pull the trigger on that. Uh, this this is also estimated quarterly's time right here. So September fifteenth. That's to us that means tax time. So I was I've 
kind of had to be a little bit judicious about uh i was i was kind of thinking that all the sales were done on the oil paints for a little while but we'll, we'll we'll try and snag at least that and maybe one or two other things here let's uh get a couple more lights there because i know that the last uh last couple rounds of dick blick stuff i was experimenting with these uh these red handle brushes here just to see are these any good and acrylic wise yeah the acrylics didn't really like them but the oils seem to like them much more now i'm gonna see first i'm gonna t try some of this lighter go here i'm gonna put this up on the beak and depending on the result that i get I'm either going to be doing some more darker glazes or this will be this will work for what I needed it to do. And that's just about there. I might I still need to do a little bit of a darker glaze and that is going to be our newfound burnt umber. Whoops, not quite that opaque. Thin down a bit there we go so that's another case of I could make that lighter and lighter nothing's gonna happen I added just a little bit of mid-tone to it bam contrast appears ah so it's a little bit thicker out of the tube but it thins down just fine okay oh I just finished the hot wing extravaganza so teal's uh Right now, Dick Blick has a 45, it's either, I think it's 40% off on the Gamblin colors. And there was just a few of the Gamblins uh, that have actually been in the cart at, at times for a while. And I was just thinking about maybe getting some of those. Because the last sale ended quite literally just as I got the funds to be able to get the stuff. Which was... A little bit disappointing. Uh, that was probably the sep was that the September sale or was that the or was that still August? I think it was still August. Okay, we uh, you know what we're gonna take this. We add a little touch of our green to it here. I just I gotta get these feathers resolved here. Yes, it's a crow, and yes, they gotta be dark. But we just added, I mean, they're as dark as they can be. It's time to get in here with some middle tones and just figure out exactly where these feathers are. It's uh, There's not a whole lot of texture on this compared to some areas where there's tons of texture. So I'm just going to have to, going to have to fudge some of that. But again, I don't want this to be a, uh, an arctic white bird or something like that. We're trying to keep it black, but they do have that shininess to their feathers. And that is one reason why I keep coming back to things like the blue. Even the thalo blue. Because, I mean, it's facing up, it's facing this way. It should be reflecting the sky. So I can see a couple of feathers there. This just about does it here. Later we'll go in with our with some form of a blending brush and just kind of mitigate any little brush strokes that are there. Uh, let me see. Uh, I try to follow every time you post a link. It costs nothing, but it makes somebody feel good. Ah, uh, yeah. The so Teals has a. Uh, I think you've got more of the Gamlin paints than I do. I only have four, maybe. Uh, it, it's just it's it's just about testing them because, well, as I have talked about before, there there are some other paints that are being worked on, and mostly that when I try and get the paints like the Gamlins or whatever, it's actually research for that broader project. And I'm hoping that maybe in October there are just some kind of prototypes for me to test. 
Now we're going to get some lighter edges on these feathers. Just a couple here. Sort of like what we were doing over here. Remember these little notches we were doing there? We'll just get a couple of them on here. Bring those out. This one too. Oh, what the heck. We'll make a couple of these things lighter as well. I need to get some more resolution on the other side of this sword here. We just have a bunch of middle tones side by side. That is not going to cut it. We'll get ourselves some light on these guys right here. Okay. And we're going to take that magenta again because why not? And we're going to throw that over here. A touch of that over here, too. Just to, again, it's got to be something different than all that. We got blue, blue, blue. And I know that's like the first, every time people are thinking non metallic metals, they just think, wow, we'll just slap some kind of bluish gray here and it'll be metal. Sort of ish, kind of. It, it gets a little bit more complicated than that. Might actually go back in with some darker purples here. We lightened everything up. I'm thinking I might actually... That's the Egyptian Violet. Egyptian Violet. Just going to bring some darks in here. We got lots of lights and middle tones. Not much in the way of dark. And now, now that's it. That's better. See, that wasn't super hard to make that adjustment. Ah, oh, they have 13 gallon and one Windsor for the oils. Yeah, I think I got the, the Van Dyke brown, that perline red, which I still haven't used very much of. And actually, we got that cadmium red deep, which I have not really used very much either. We're just uh, we'll find something that could be a really good experiment for it. So uh, I think now this is that there's so much more form in that. That thing had just not very much form in it whatsoever. Okay, this thing. This thing needs to get lighter too. We're going to take some of our off white yellow and mix it with a little bit more yellow it's also thinner because i think that's what i need to have it stick over here and sure enough that sticks real nice there's a whole bunch of stuff over here that's just way too dark that we need to make lighter And you think we're, we're kind of stippling that paint on there. That's another way of getting that wet oil paint to stick onto, well, wet oil paint. Instead of just this. Doing that, uh, you can only imagine that that kind of repetitive brush stroke there is just going to wipe away what you've already painted. It's not going to add any paint. It's going to subtract paint. It's not going to mix it. It's not going to do anything. It's just literally going to wipe it away. Let's see what we can do here on his face. And we'll go back to that. I take a little bit of our Fanchon Red there. We'll mix that with our off-white yellow. So what we can do, given this guy more of a forehead here. A little bit of a cheekbone there. I might hit this maybe with some blood effects or whatever afterwards since it does seem like the the eyeballs were a little tasty snack for our crow up here. Nice juicy eyeballs. Always got to go for those first. Got our gray here. Again, yeah, that was kind of a, a warmish neutral gray. 
because at the top of this is going to be cooler because of facing the sky, the stuff facing towards the ground, we would probably want it to be more of a neutral. And again, I, I don't want to get too light here. This is supposed to be in shadow, but maybe it's uh, reflecting some light from somewhere. Maybe something off camera. And if I can, let's see just how much smaller we can go. Again, it's the the oils just let you make these tiny, tiny little brush strokes that the acrylics just can't. Because oil is thinner than water. Water just has a certain tension to it. That is why the oils, that capillary action of oils, is so much more significant than, say, what you're ever going to get with acrylics, even contrast paints. Now, let's see. Brian says, oh, I still remember reflections, 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 all in oil paint to boot. Yeah, Brian, it is, uh, it is definitely, it is madness. But conveniently enough, Armored Wolf is, wants to see the Silver Pharaoh. So let's take a little trip here to the Tomb Kings, and this is where the madness of reflection upon reflection and all the different colors happen. Boom. So that is, there's your army board there. And you can check this out on the blog. I believe there are 113 posts, or maybe there's like 130 posts describing on how this thing was made. The display board, all of the miniatures, everything. This was the very first time that I used fluorescent paints. Look at, look at the armor on those horses there. Every single one of those panels is a different color. Look, you see the magenta in there? You see the green? All in those different facets of the metals. And look at the, we got here again, we got magenta and green side by side. You got the blue, you got different temperatures of green. Now that back panel, all of those critters f were scratch sculpted, I think except for those little empire guys. Those objective markers, the, the screaming skull catapult, the two big monsters, the colossus, and the hyro titan. Those were sculpted from scratch. I'm hoping at some point to be able to do sculpting streams on here. And that whole back panel tells you the entire story of the Zinch Tainted Tomb Kings. You can see your Empire guys running away. They've been trying to dig a little hole right there. I do believe at least seven of the Painting Pyramid videos came from this particular army. Now let's see, Luther was looking at the Instagram. Have you ever done any the lighting effects in a campfire setting? Oh, uh, Luther, actually, yes, I have. It was a diorama that I did, which I'm going to redo, actually. Uh, it was uh, one of the Dark Sword dioramas that I did years ago. So, yeah, you can check that out uh, on, the, on the blog there. Just look in the diorama section. Uh, I, like I said, I'm going to do that again because I've got some of the Dark Sword adventurers, and it, they're basically kind of huddled around a campfire. So I will definitely be doing something like that because that would be a blast for sure. Ah, these need some of that phthalo blue. That's that's what we're missing over here. Let's get some of this phthalo blue going on a couple of these guys here. Uh, I'd say this is exactly why I don't things get done things at home. Uh, glued to the painting magic. Well, hopefully, actually, you well, despite the massive uh, amount of people that showed up, you were still able to get some stuff done on that project that you were working on. Ah, there we see. That's what we need. We need a little, just a little something to separate that. Oh, we got the bits going. He's going to get some. He's going to get some of those. He's going to get all those purple bits. He's going to try and get that one. And he gets chased away. He's like, maybe, maybe if I just hang out here. So you won't notice. Whoops. So say we all. So say we all. Oh, thank you so much, Roy Experience. That is appreciated. Well, we'll we'll celebrate with something else. We'll celebrate with this right here. Thank you so much. That is appreciated.
a little toast as we add some more uh, right in here we could use some of that it's not gonna look any lighter but that little bit of blue there we got so much of the yeah so much of the other we got to do that now these eyes here don't we all oh, get spider-man joining the fray boom there he is <laughs> and and now there's there's gonna be an aerial assault he's like wait a minute you were last night and he gets chased away it's like why do they always have to have wings they move too fast when they have wings actually you know what <laughs> maybe we'll play with this just a touch at I think I've got it mixed in a container here yes I do let's try some of this and dr. fee good wants to feel good by doing the bits that, oh he's gonna it's like he can't there's nothing he can get me he's shaking a paint jar in his hand he can't do that puppet show Oh, Roy needs one of these two. Here, we'll just look at this. It's a tip jar. That's the real life tip jar right there. It just landed in the tip jar. See that? That is sustenance right there. So let's get this uh, cadmium red. And this is the real deal. This is not faux cadmium red deep. So say we all. So say we all. Now, and Teals does the subscription. He's going to wait for that. It's going into the tip jar and he caught it he caught it because I was too busy trying to create I just want to see what happens when we mix that cadmium red deep with this black here uh, and and Roy is going oh it's a oh Bajawa in the house how are you doing Bajawa welcome back see we're just going to get some uh since the eyes, we, we feel like the eyes have been consumed. We're just going to get a little... Ah, that's more fun. That's definitely more fun. But thank you so much for the bits. He's like, oh, I don't want my eyes bit out. Uh, Mini Day Trader, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Well, well it will fill the glass with more more bits and stuff. Because those go down real smooth. Bits and subs, they go, oh man, those go down so smooth. And thank you so much for those. Wow, that's uh, that's dark. So that was the actual cadmium red right there. Oh, it's, oh a hype train thing going on there. Oh, I'm glad you're doing good, Bajawa. Uh, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's try... have this kind of wander down some of the ah there we go yeah I'll we'll have it wander those eyes being chewed out actually I think uh, that might be oh there's a little bit of entrails yeah we gotta have some let's just use our cadmium red to do some blood things and now Capone gets into the mix too he's like wait a minute there was something in here. I just saw it. It's in here somewhere. So say we all. So say we all. I think we got some gift subs. Those are going to start making the rounds. Everybody get your gift subs here. Well, I'll look at that. So I think... Uh, so, so it says level 2 complete. So that must have been... Uh, I guess all those bitses and everything else just uh, set off the old uh, set off the old hype train. Ah, uh, looks like Lord Zephyrus now has a gift sub courtesy of Teals. Ah, uh, and Doctor Feegood is going to do he's doing the bitses here. So yeah, that's actually a little bit of uh, some blood and guts right there, which means we need to get some over here too. And he's going to be, he's sneaking around. He's like, there's something moving around in here. It's like, maybe if I just stay way down here, they won't notice. It's like, nope. The bird, the bird wants to get some of that. 
Uh, let's see, uh, voice, uh, voice for karma. That's, uh, thanks for kind of hanging out here. So let's see, level three hype train, 48% sub gift or use bits to get to the next level. And I go, oh, there's a little countdown thing too. I keep forgetting that that's, that's what kind of does all the, the hype train stuff. But thank you so much, everybody. Now, an armored wolf strikes back. I do believe that's a challenge. So that's your cadmium red. I'm gonna, now, that was cadmium red mixed with the black. Let's see what happens when we just do the straight up cadmium. Ah, yeah, okay. You see how that still covers? Important. Very important. Because that's the real... This is actually the first time I've used Cadmium Red Deep. It seriously is. I have not actually had a chance to use this color yet. Wow, i got to start using this more. Because when I was doing the, the, the color swatches, wherever the heck that one might be, that's the Perlene Red. Where's our Cadmium Red one? That's Permanent Crimson. Let's see if I can grab it. Ah, there it is. So that looked very different here on the color chart. It just didn't seem like it was going to be that intense of a color. But this was, uh, yeah, it was that uh, a recent video that I did. Now, of course, that's on white. This is on very dark colors here. So that is interesting that that shows up so much more here on these darker colors. Uh, we need to get some down here, except that might... Uh, I might also just do that with the blood effects too. So let's get some of that down here. Let's have it go all the way down to there. Uh, let's, oh, let's see. So Drax, it's... Uh, where's my fanchion red here? It is definitely a step darker than that. It might cover a little bit more. Well, it's also just more intense. Now, uh, uh, Drax, were you here last night when we showed these two things and compared them to each other? Because I showed this to Kathy earlier today. Here, let's move you over this way. Oh, thanks again, Al Capone. Ah, 130 left in the hype train. So look at this. So this is with the fluorescent acrylics. That's fluorescent acrylics. And then look at this. So And that's no fluorescence in there, really. That's just your cadmium orange there. So check out, look at the difference. Look at look at how much more intense this is than this. It's just like we've all talked about. The oil paints are just naturally more intense. I, I was I was shocked when I saw that. I was like, wait a minute, look at the difference there. Uh let's see, so that's gonna go down here, it's gonna hit here. I mean this is it's just amazing. Wow, how intense how intense that is! Nope, oh, Spider Man, Spider Man just got that hype train going. The level three hype train. I don't know how many levels does it go. <laughs> so say we all. And thank you so much for all the all those gift subs here. We'll just we'll bring out our our little glass. We'll collect some of those. Oh, let's see. Who's getting some? Uh, well, Walking Harder, Calirvo. Oh, hey, Calirvo. Yeah. And, oh, and Brian's getting one. Luther's Don't getting one. Let's have this trailing behind here. Oh, geez. Acid burn is up to six. Holy Don't smokes. I'm going to assume that each level requires more and more bitses and subs and all that kind of stuff. So oh, we got ourselves a little bit of a blood trail going along there. So say we all. So I'm just glad I noticed that. I'm just glad that I noticed that. Now I'm just going to, while I've got this over here. Oh, thank you so much, Eclipse, for the follow. Uh, and let's see. Oh, and thanks, Mini Day Trader, again for the gift sub. 
I'm just going to play with this over here. <laughs> so Eclipse's follow got a little bit eclipsed by all of the uh, all the hype train stuff and all the bitses and everything else. Uh, so that is mixing. This is very much like what I got on the swatches. I was, I was a little bit thinking like, well, okay, why was it so different on the swatches? But it's, was it really that different on the swatches? So as soon as you add any kind of lighter color to the cadmium red, it just it starts to lose a lot of that oomph. Oh, RJ Grittings. Oh, thank you so much. Now it's it's uh, we're starting to get to a point where we can kind of uh, if we can get these all in our hands here and just kind of get the three of us. So we, we the, the faction starting to starting to develop here. We also have some more. I like I like this guy here that we can finish off and then we can get back to some of our other ones here where we're doing some of our glazing oh my gosh yeah that so the glaze that I put on here a couple hours ago that's actually dry so that's really fascinating yep so I put a glaze of that purple on here that is already dry to just a couple hours yeah, RJ, I don't know how much you've seen of some of the other, uh, wow, level five hype train. Man, that was, uh, that was impressive. Now, let's see. Teals asks if I have a video up on getting your mixes into the bottles. Uh, Teals, I've got three of those on the Patreon page. Uh, I, I was going to send, uh, to the, the folks that have the subs, I was going to send out those. So just, uh. I was going to send out the 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 link uh, the link the link for the one that I just did with the the color swatches and the latest oh, one oh, that's got the uh, the color mixing stuff. I'll just be sending those out to to all the subs. So you, at some point, maybe oh, tomorrow. Oh, earlier in the day, all these people that have all these gift subs are gonna find. Uh, video links in their emails <laughs> so yeah rj looks like you're gonna be getting one too so say we all. So say we all. courtesy of the roy experience and al capone of bookend kitties and d8 is getting one too oh and the hobby hutch well it looks like we just got past the uh level five hype train there it says 114 percent and spider-man does the cheer thing thank you so much Yeah, there's uh, not and uh, well now this this is a toast. We do the toast here. Thank you so much for the for the donation, which will out oh, and there's the sound. So thanks, uh, folks. The donations like that, like uh, when Al did his uh, super kind donation a couple of weeks ago, that was translated literally into the so the paints. And the brushes here, which is why we've got uh, the interference blue. And where is my uh, iridescent? Oh, yes. And and this one right here. So these were definitely courtesy of the donations. They they get directly transferred into some kind of experimental materials that I maybe just kind of had my eye on for a while. And just thought, well, okay, that's an experimental material. We need actual working materials too. Oh, so let's see. I just got a level five hype train emote. Wow! I'll look at the. I, I wonder. Uh, only visible to you. Oh, so it's like a little bag. It's a bag on fire. <laughs> it is hyper fire. Well, thanks again, everybody, for all of the. Well, for the hype train stuff, because I think we've maybe gone to level two or something like that, but that is definitely farther, I think, than we've gone before. It is all appreciated. Oh, good grief. How can I... I don't think we want to get too much of the, the blood stuff here on on these. We'll just we'll let it be. This guy here, he's munching on that stuff. 
So we'll, we'll take our little experiment here with the the cadmium red and just get some of that onto his beak here. I think that's a, that's kind of interesting little color addition there, but that's a... Wow, look at how intense that cab... Jeez, Drax, look at that. Well, I know you've had the cadmium red for a while and, and stuff, but that's the first time I've seen the, the cadmium red deep up close and personal. I've seen the faux cadmium red. But actually, uh, I think, Drax, you saw the... Vi look at how much lighter this is. So that's your faux cadmium red deep. The actual cadmium red deep, wow. Dang, look at look at that. That's impressive right there. Now, can we get can we get some more variation as we got that purple in there, which is interesting. However, I'd like something else. We're going to take some of that same purple. We'll mix it with our thalo blue here. I'm really looking forward to that purple and thalo blue mixed together for the for the Rubik Marines. That should make an unbelievable blue for that. I mean, it's so intense. Yeah, we're getting some dark under here now. And we've been missing some back here because I believe that's actually cloth. The other ones have had basically just like bits of feathers sticking out of those areas. So let's make this more of a cloth here. Uh, one of the only reasons I got the, all the traditional set. I came with the genuine chamomiles and reds about doggone it. I, okay, that's... Uh, and you don't really, like we've been talking, you don't need a ton of those. If you can just get the actual cadmium yellows and reds and stuff in a starter set, that should last you a heck of a long time, if not the, the entire length of time you would actually need it. Once again, we're going to get some of that, that sort of bluish tone in here. Jeez, and it came with the cerulean blue. Wow, that... That that's not really a starter set. That's more of a that's more of a finish set right there. That's that was really impressive. Okay, we've got this uh my whole arm here that really does not have much going on for it. And we're gonna get some of that. Well, let's get some of our off white yellow into this. It might just have to be, it's either got to be thicker or thinner. We're going to go with thinner first, and we'll see if it sticks, which it does. There we go. Now I can actually see an, some form there. I, I wasn't seeing anything. There was nothing going on there. I'm going to go with some lighter stuff here, and if this doesn't do what I'm thinking it should, I'm going to go back the other way with it. Because we've got, this needs to just be a tad lighter here. Some kind of reflection or something needs to be happening right there. And you know, I'm just going to leave that skin be dark where that was tempted to go back in with the green. Now, this thing over here, yes, it's reflecting that, but that was just some brush strokes we threw on there early on. And we're waiting until a moment like now where we can just blend that in and make that nice and soft. Sometimes patience, you just sometimes you just gotta wait. Now there's a, a bunch of crazy little brush strokes here. We're gonna manage some of these too. Just like that. Can still see. Look, there's still some of the greenish ones here. I do think we could still use a some more like some metal highlights on on this uh, stand, whatever the heck this thing is. I'm not sure what it is. I'll catch you later, Luther. As you gotta run, head to bed. Don't have the stamina to stay up late anymore. Well, thanks again, Luther, for hanging out, keeping me company while we're. 
trying to get these crazy bird brains done. Ah, there we go. A couple there. That's better. We need to do the same here, too. Just a, a bunch more of these little small lights. We also need to get... There's a couple of feathers here. We'll hit those, too. Oh, let's see. So Series 6, Series 7, and Series 8 paints. Ah, and Spidey Man, oh, he's going to be getting his dice bag. Uh, the same price as the modern set, around 34 bucks. Now, was that during the... I think you probably just mentioned it, but that wasn't during the sale, right? Or no, it must have been during the sale. Okay. Well, I'll catch you later, Luther. Thanks for joining us again. That is definitely... Jeez, at just 34 bucks. Considering that that one container of the cadmium orange, that 37 mil was what, uh, that was about 28 bucks or something like that, just for the one. Uh, I get a couple of, again, on our little uh, feathers here, and then we're going to go back in with some more darks again. So we're throwing some more lights on here, then we'll go back in with some darks in a couple places. Now... I'm just going to say, okay, that has to be metal right there, but that's got it. That is her foot. We will take some of our indigo blue here. And we just, we need some separation on this. We got, again, a whole collection of middle tones here with no, no darks. And that's what we are going to add right over here. That's the indigo blue. It's such a utilitarian color because it can just be made so thin. But it also glazes nicely too. Uh, let's see. I think I got mine on Amazon. Okay. I'll be doggone. Well, I mean, geez, that's that's where I get all of that's where I got all the Windsor Newton stuff, so it makes sense. And that was the that was the traditional uh makes sense. It's a traditional set there. It does make me wonder what they thought, like, for the Williamsburg thing. What made them think that was the modern set? Because it's not like the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, MIG ammo, where something that is modern would be something like, well, their Mecca line. I am going to get a couple of uh, darker little well, cuts in the leather here, just for the heck of it. And we're going to... So a bit of green in here, if it's possible. A few hints of green there. Yep, see that? There's just a couple again. It's just a suggestion, suggestion of that green. And that is our crazy berry white green from Holbein. Nope, we're going to go the other way with this. Other way, taking that off-white yellow, mix it with that magenta. And over here, oh gee whiz, there's nothing. That's still the original pre-glaze over there. Well, that's taken care of. That didn't take much. Now I'm looking. Ah, here we go. So it could be fun to put that little bit of freehand on here. So I'm just going to keep that where I can see it. And let's play with that. Oh, just for fun. Let's just do it for fun. Uh, let me see. So check there too. It was a bit more. Well, it was 45, not 34. Bad. For two cad yellows, a cad red, and a genuine cerulean blue. Heck no. Let's go the old school color. So no thalo blue, no dax purple. Oh, geez, I'd, I wouldn't mind having the alizarin crimson instead. All right, let's get this uh, bird bird skull in here now. I know it's going to be, well, it's going to be tough for you to see it, so I don't know if we'll really do too much of that. It might be too tough for you to see. 
Oh, now you can see it. That's going to be interesting. It's pointed in a really interesting direction for me. But we'll, we'll see what we can do here. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to get the, the beak going down here. And I think we actually had a little bit of like a bluish color that went in here. And then we're just going to let that sit there for now. And then we also did, I don't know if you can see, see those little, yeah, those, we're going to try that on this marble over here. Uh, I think you can see that. And again, the, the oils just let you do these really nice extended brush strokes here. Nice and easy. And we'll just let that sort of fade out a bit where it starts getting into the the lighter firelight. If I tilt it this way, maybe you can see it. Okay. Just some crazy little markings like this. I thought this could be fun. Yeah, what are these? I have no idea what they are. Just thought it could be interesting. And have some of these just going in different directions. Again, the reason why, not sure. But it makes it a little bit more interesting than just straight up, well, blackish blue stone. It now makes these these broken pieces look like they're part of something. And we can just feather this out real nice and easy there. All right, so to me that adds a little bit more to the base. And if I didn't like it, I could just literally wipe it all away. It would be gone. So we're back to this here. We can get some of our lighter tones. Oh, hey, Redman, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. What do I do to do? Can I get a link? Name of the product is fine. Oh, there we go. Oh, there, that Al providing the link. Uh, let me see. It's a really good price there if it's in stock. And Drax has been debating too. Yeah, we're all kind of sitting here debating what what is it that we really want during these this sale here. Well, geez, it now if we hadn't wiped out the stock and all that the the zero brushes we could be getting some of those but we sure we did a number on those we wiped that out all of a sudden they're going to notice uh i don't maybe we're the reason why they're doing all these sales on oil paint who knows are we are we having that much of an effect what is that we're influencer or something like that are, are we uh, affecting the market for oil paints causing more sales I don't know. I'd like to think that we were. I kind of doubt it, but I'd like to think that we were. Now I'll get these crazy little things that are extended from the side of the head. Let's just get a touch more of our lighter coat in there. Give him more of a Rest of his nose there. Uh, let's see. Pretty sure there's a book of Wapple saying something about 
overthinking there. They always think long, think wrong. That is that is from from the book of Wapo there. Think long, think wrong. Because we always we think so hard about stuff that sometimes we just kind of talk ourselves out of things that we really just should have done in the first place. I've seen it so many times. I've literally seen people not actually paint anything because they walked up to their big wall of paint jars and could not choose just the right red, so they didn't paint anything. <laughs> Which was a bummer for me because I ended up just painting by myself. Okay, we'll get We'll touch of this kind of bluish gray into the beak there. We're just going to do a little bit of smoothing, maintenance work there on that. Then we're going to get some eyes into this. There we go. And we could, just for funsies here, we're going to take some of that thalo blue, we'll mix it with some of our white heat. Now, that's, uh, I'm going to go oppo with this. Speak. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's try our cadmium red deep over here. Let's see what this is going to do. Because after seeing the Tomb Kings with the, ah, uh, wow, look at that. Look what that just did on that base. Now, I know it's going to be a little bit different here because we just did put the the black there, but I'm going to give this the same same treatment here. Yeah, cadmium has no problem covering that. Looks more like, now he looks like a Cylon. He's a Cylon crow. Who would have thought of that? We're also, for the heck of it, we're going to take some of this cadmium yellow light over here. I think we're going to mix it with our thalo blue. And, well, basically we've got thalo green now. And we're going to pop this into a couple places here, too. Uh, let's see, I need to start a spreadsheet for oils. I think the hard part with that is when you have box art and you're trying to get exact color matches. <laughs> but that's why I usually don't do box art. Well, I think at a certain point, too, you just end up getting a familiarity. You just say, okay, that's a warmer red. And then, too, like here, most crow feathers, most people are not thinking of phthalo green but i just pop phthalo green right next to some purple there and actually in the shadows of this purple over here look what i just threw in there i just threw some phthalo green in there into the shadows of purple wow we still got this head over here we got to do some more on that but we're going to throw some of that same crazy green over here I mean, for me, I have to I have to match stuff all the time. That not just to, I have to match things to stuff that I painted 15 years ago. I have to match stuff to, obviously, and here's the crazy thing, Drac. These are some of the toughest things. So you'll get that concept art where it's a it's a illustration of something that is now a miniature, but they used a colored backdrop. And it's casting light on the figure. So you've got some like bright green that's being cast on the figure artificially that is not going to be there on the box art. And now you have to somehow work around all of that crazy bright green whatever that's in the concept art that should not that is not allowed on the miniature itself. So those those are those are real interesting challenges. If we just threw some of that green over here into our our little crow skull. Yeah, look at that. Oh, let's see. It could be my group bought every online retailer in the U.S. 
for the uh, Panthecelia f f Infinity. Yeah, I get, it kind of makes sense. Why would they have tons and tons of stock? Speaking of, let's go, let's go crazy with this green here. Okay, we're putting green under the crow feathers here. We might even, yeah. Here we're gonna throw some green over here too. We're just we're going crazy with green. It's it's a madhouse here. I throw some of that same green over there. Just because. Sometimes why is sometimes just because. We put some more of that crazy green on the on the crow right over here. And this is a nice, that is a nice juicy green right there. So say we all. So say we all. Now, hey, Biggs, how are you doing? He's going to catch that one. He's going to catch it. And he got it. He done got that one. So that uh, this is a first time use for a Camion Red Deep. And I mean, is it, it's not, it shouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> It should not be a surprise at all what we were able to accomplish with that. But now I'm real curious to see where else we can get some of this green. Like, oh, there, yes. Nothing like using a super intense green to shade while something that should be reddish brown. And we're going to do that here on the underside of the the hood. Let's get the some of this crazy green here again a place that maybe you won't really notice it so Biggs how are you doing and thanks again for the sub it is appreciated not gonna do more in there but I really I loved that green I say okay so why that green there well because there's so much yellow over here guess what that green looks a little less out there because the, the same yellow that we use to make that green is already sitting here in the skull we're gonna get some of this green right there right next to that highlight so now yeah see, that has a little more juice to it we'll even just get a tiny touch of that over here too again that is a tiny little hint of green right there and the skull I guess we're gonna hit some of this purple again with that crazy essentially phthalo green uh, I guess oh you know what I just made this is hilarious it's basically this green right here <laughs> just made just made warp lightning green Oh, Drax, do these things, uh, I'm looking for a pigment number there. I don't, uh, I don't see any pigment numbers on there. It is kind of nice with the oils having those pigment numbers on there. Isn't it, Drax? Now, let's see. Biggs is doing well, getting married in seven days. Wow, well, <laughs> Hello, little harmon. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Well, Biggs, you are way busier than, than any of us are right now then. So I, I salute you, and I hope that that uh, hasn't been too crazy getting ready for that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Quero. Quero. Huevo. Srevtila. I'm just going to go with uh, Svero. <laughs> I'm going to shorten that down because that is that is like many mouthfuls for me. So I do apologize if I was not able to uh, kind of phonetically do that, uh, your your screen name there. I apologize for that. Ah, look at this. Look what I just added there. Yes. So where's this, uh, where did that go? Where's my cadmium green light? That's not it. Where is that? That's over somewhere here. Yeah, cadmium green light. I just made that. Here it is. <laughs> Literally, this is the color that I just put on there. I just made this thing. So this is, again, another case of 
sometimes you get kind of just excited and attracted by a color and you go, wait a minute, I just made this thing out of phthalo blue and cadmium yellow. Literally, uh, where's my phthalo blue here? Yeah. Well, pretend this is, this is our faux cadmium yellow here, but these two together just made me a cadmium green light. Oh, my goodness. Oh no! Thank you, <laughs> thanks so much for the for the follow though. I'm just uh, I'm just kind of all jazzed here that I found finally a nifty color here for my skin tone. Yeah, nifty little skin. Well, also too, the faux cadmium green or, or faux cadmium yellow and that uh, phthalo blue is also going to be a much less expensive cadmium green. Because it ain't cadmium. Well, not 100% real anyways. You know where else we could maybe use this? Is over on these two thingies over here. Uh, let's see. Uh, huh. You want eggs of some sort. Uh, let's see. I really like this miniature. I wonder if it's from... So, this is from the Corvus Cabal. Uh, now, see this little logo right here? And anytime you're in here and you see a logo here, that's generally the uh, the either the company or the game system. So this is from Warcry right here. So when I was doing the Song of Ice and Fire stuff. That's it, Song of Ice and Fire. And here are some of the other ones from the same faction here. So as you can imagine, you've got that whole sort of crow imagery going on here so it really really is kind of an interesting little faction it means i'm gonna to have to get me some of these for me oh there we go there you go uh so the uh oh geez we missed a whole thing down here um that's better yeah somehow missed that so the Actually, the, I was just introduced to the, a faction that I'd completely forgotten about. It's probably one that they introduced a few months ago, and I just, with everything that's been going on, I just kind of spaced on that. It's the Scions of Flame. I've got to, uh, I'm going to have to get those guys, because I think, uh, now I wouldn't be doing the, the Flames, obviously, in orange. I would be doing probably in, oh, maybe I would get the uh, Marion Street Magenta fluorescent and just experiment with that see what that does yeah your scions of flame I do believe that's what they were called just a touch more reflected light here and then we're gonna get some actually some dark in here there uh, oh, gee whiz, I'm looking at this here. Now, you're going to have a tough time seeing it, but first we need to actually get some dark on this side. And then we're going to have to come in on this side with some some kind of reflected light. This is going to call on some blind blending. And this is the thing that the oils do so well. I'm just going to put a couple little dots of paint in here okay now we're gonna take this brush and with those I think you might be able to see that dot of paint in there now we're just gonna take that and we're gonna pull that and all of a sudden now we're getting a little bit of a reflected light in here where there was just nothing there was absolutely no shape whatsoever Yeah. So now I can see some sort of reflected light on that side. Oh, this is another area where the these brushes work so well. Now look at how I'm just making a little bit of a, a stand for myself here. So that is your quadruple zero. Nice little two dollar and something cent brush. It does really well, kind of at that crazy angle. 
that's where the sables just don't work very well. It's not in their nature. But these brushes really can. Look at that nice little, again, a little bit of extra oomph there, a little bit of sparkle. Speaking of which, we could use some right out here. That was a little bit too dark. And now it also has a little bit of that greenish hint to it. Uh, let's see. Now, oh, check this out. Check this out. We just, uh, we've showed this a few times. Now, this was done. There was a lot of the fluorescent acrylic in this. This one was done with acrylics. You can actually watch this one on the YouTube channel here. And now we're going to compare that to this one. Look at the intensity of the oil paints. Look at how intense this is. I mean, this is intense, but this is practically bouncing off the page or off the camera. Look at that. Look at the difference in intensity from the oils to the acrylics. There's just uh, something, well, it makes sense that the oils are more heavily pigmented. It's just crazy to see it. It's that when you see it in person, like even here, that little bit of the, the thalo green that we stuck in, that one little highlight there, just really impressive what that does. Oh, and there's your there's your links right there. Are the, the intrepid moderator doing doing that yeoman's work ah see now that just sat there long enough i could actually blend that green up in there speaking of which let's go back to this green here let's go back to this one let's get a little bit of green on the underside of this and again more separation not by value contrast but by color contrast so if we make this black and white here yeah I think you can see there okay I got a little lighter there so there is a bit of a reflected light but now that that is a greenish tint so much more additional separation when we bring this color back there we go now let's see some of the air mount I went to deep school it just went to nail it uh Ah, okay. Let's get my full screen back over here. I think, oh, actually, actually, we're going to take some of this crazy little green here. We're going to throw that on the ends of these feathers over here. <laughs> Especially next to all that cadmium red. But look at this. Look look at who has just entered the domain, folks. We have ourselves Eeny Meenies. How are you doing? Oh, let's see. Oh, I got Freckles and a Feisty Crabman. Oh, and Zambies is in here. And Dr. Tentacle. And look at this. Goober Town. Yeah, so well, you come, well you're going to have plenty of feathers here. We got Roasted Chicken. Who wants Roasted Chicken? So we got we got hot wings. We got plenty of hot wings here. Get your hot wings. Get your hot wings. Get them while they're hot. Uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, Mose, how are you doing? So yeah, we've got ourselves a uh, our little bit of a Corvus cabal, working with our oils. <laughs> yeah, Goober Town. Um, oh, and folks, be sure to give Eeny Meenies the follow. I'm sure you already are, but. You never know when Twitch does the sneaky, nasty unfollow thing. So it's always best to double check. Make sure you're still following Eeny Meenies. So what were you working on, Eeny, during your uh, during your session? I haven't gotten to, geez, I, I don't get to see anybody's session the last couple of weeks. It's been kind of a bummer. Oh, hey, noob painter, how are you doing? And we got Zambies. Uh, oh, and let's see, I'm just looking to see who is all in here. They're very, they're very spicy. They're quite spicy. Actually, we've been uh, playing around here, mixing. Basically, we we made ourselves a cadmium green. We we have it in a jar. Well, actually, the jar is kind of empty, so we just made it out of thalo blue and our faux cadmium yellow. And we've just been popping it all over the place. We've been popping some green over here. We just put a little bit of our our new 
Thalo slash Camium Green over there. All painting the Echoes of Death from Kingdom Death. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, Zambies, the, we never had a chance to recover from Reprocon. That never happened. We're, we're still, actually, I'm still doing some of the kind of after things on some of the ones that we were painting. So, folks, be sure to watch all of the highlights of Reprocon. So we were doing stuff like this. We were doing some nifty water effects. Speaking of Thalo Green and Thalo Blue and Cadmiums, all here on the Ghost Bride, I think. We also did, well, again, more oils. But this uh, foliage right here, that is also something you can check out. And we did some, where's our, ah, oh, here's our water effects. So simple water effects here, just using Liquitex Heavy Gel. It's the same stuff that we use for icicles, but we did some, some water effects on that. Uh, oh, hey, Beef, let's see. All that travel to, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, just lurking. New painter is just lurking. Let's see. Uh, golden scooters. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, it's the Liquitex Heavy Gel. We're, here it is right here. And you can, like I said, you can go back and watch the video. We've used this for fountains, for water, like I said. Here's another example of that as water effect. So here's a little, a bigger example. Now we also have it as an example for ice. So you can see all of our little icicles hanging off here. So you got, see some icicles there, some icicles right there. You can also use it to, oh, here's some more icicles right here. So see icicles hanging off of our our little sticks here and our scorpion. We've also got, let's see, I think we have another example of ice. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. So I got some more icicles. It's the exact same stuff. It can do more, but wait, there's more. Because all of this fire right here was also sculpted with that exact same material. Now, and there's your link. Oh, yeah, uh, Dr. Tentacle, you can just go back and watch, oh, gosh, any number of videos on the YouTube channel where I'm using it for icicles. Here's another example. We sculpted the fire. That's that exact same material. You can paint it. You can also, now, this is, uh, there's one here where we really tinted it pretty well. Yeah, so you can tint it. So you see we got more more splashy stuff going on here. Here's another example of that same water effect. You can see we kind of tinted it, gave it a little bit of a bluish tint there on some of our splashing stuff that we're building up on that. It's a really, really handy material. There's just so much that you can do with it. It can do a lot of different things. Hello, I... little hobbits. Spark my gum job. Thank you so much, Cal Calgore for the follow that is appreciated uh, sometimes those miniatures where the mold line is running through the fur well I have re-sculpted the fur using the Liquitex heavy gloss gel it is not expensive it's way easier to use than any water effect stuff is and like I said you can do a bazillion different things with it I mean it is amazing stuff now we're getting a little bit of indigo blue here with their white. Uh, so, Eni, have you been able to do uh, more stuff with the oils? Because I, I wasn't sure if you were still able to have some fun with the oils because you were really, you were using those like crazy. And you were, you were really, you were really enjoying the heck out of those, doing some really fun stuff with them. We need, a, I think, a bit of reflected light over here. I know it's going to be tough for you to see, but that's just got to go in there. It just has to be done. Also, something in here. Oh, what the heck? Let's use some of this crazy cadmium green that we just made. 
uh, let's see there's so much water products on the market don't even know where to start well the nice thing is is that is not sold as a water effect whatsoever um, and it's just in, it's in every art store because uh, painters use it it's it's used in crafts it's used in way more things than just say miniatures or model trains or something like that it is way more sculptural so instead of doing a bunch of resin pours and all that other kind of nasty stuff I mean all you have to do is just wait for it to dry and that's it oh here's a here's another example of it right here let me just grab this guy. It'll be tough to get this all underneath here. So we're going to back this out a bit. So you can watch. Uh, now parts of this were done for the Patreon page, but all of the foliage and the painting of this and the water effects, oh, and the painting of the sorcerer right here, that's all, again, that's uh, highlights. Just go back, look at the highlights. You can watch this whole process of him being painted and all of this. And that's just that same Liquitex heavy gloss gel in the in the water here. And it worked fantastic. And by the way, this is made out of pink foam. There's one sheet of Scopey because that's a metal dragon sitting up there. No kidding, that's a metal dragon. But this whole base is made from pink foam. Literally junk pink foam that came in some packaging. All of those individual stones, we cut those out. Oh yeah, uh, Aussie, that is that is what I've used to get rid of those darn things because they are so freaking nasty. Uh, Tini was really hungry. She probably went to get a snack. She was doing acrylics tonight, but it still has been doing oils a bit. Okay, that's good because I, I wasn't sure if she was still able to keep uh, rocking the oils or not. Now... Back here, I'm just going to take my nice, fine blending brush here. I'm going to do a little bit more blending back here, especially now that this paint has had a little while to set, which means now I can get in here with my yellow ochre. Oh, maybe a little touch of that red. Wow, that cadmium red, it was that was that added some punch to it. There we go. We're, we're, I knew we were missing something there, and we're missing one over here too. We're missing one over here. Let's get this one. Now we got our green in there. I'm just gonna say that's, if I'm gonna make that metal, I need to get a couple of more little sparkly sort of highlights there. Now that we're just going to say, okay, he's been chewing on the eyes here, so <laughs> I should have sculpted a little eye down here, like he dropped one of them or something. If I had known that's what was going on, I would have done that, but I didn't know that's what was going on. That could have been really hilarious. Back in here, now you can see it, so that's that needs something can't just it's all just one shade of mid-tone we need either some kind of light or we either need to do some kind of dramatic color on there and given its location not looking for a dramatic color on that just looking for a little increase of some light let's give it a top edge now I think you can see that boom that's all it needed actually this needs a top edge too while I'm at it, and this, uh-huh, that's the other thing we're missing here. Now, I don't want this to be one complete sweep here. It's got to be broken up and then faded out. And then we're going to hit this one area right here just a touch of our white that's it just one little dot right there it sort of represents just whatever light source just hitting that one area K 
Okay, I don't want that skull to get too... too oh, we need to do the same on this side, too. We did it over there. We got to do it here. I think we're good on that. Now we even have a little bit of a split in the armor over there. I think I'm going to double down on that little bit of a pink reflection on that. And maybe even some more on the skin tone there. I'm basically looking to get separation from all that metal via the color instead of more lights and darks. Uh -huh, she wanted to keep her acrylic skills sharp. Uh, let me see. Oh, it, uh, yes, well, that's all that's left of mine. We have to make this last quite a while here. Uh, actually, there's uh, very little. I'm just doing a few highlights with the pure. Everything else is non. It's all this, this off-white yellow. That's only being used just for a few areas here where I'm looking to get the, the kind of straight up kind of spectral highlight type of thing. Otherwise, you're usually seeing me go over there, over here into the off-white yellow. Because if you watch the acrylic videos, these are the same. One is more of a blue. One is more of kind of a pinkish skin tone. And you can watch, again, this is on the YouTube channel here. So this was not painted with oils. This was actually painted with contrast paints. So as contrast paints like so, but mixed with these two off-whites to turn them into a semi-translucent color. Actually, that all that, that tattoo stuff, that was just Leviathan Blue right there. So this one's on the YouTube channel. I did this on the on a Twitch session, but that's before I knew you could I could make highlights permanent. Had I known that, that would have been really handy. But I didn't know you can make highlights permanent and that they could be the entire length of your session. So yeah, just live and learn. And that was a case where I had to learn something the hard way. Now, there's Eni back in the house. Yeah, and there's your link to the... Uh, that, that's... Uh, I really enjoyed that. That's from uh, Artisan Guild. That's the, the same company that did the Wapelia spell brush figure. So we, we added in our dark there. But we took a little bit of our gray to sort of mesh that here. Oh, let's see. Rex asked, do you have a lecture type contract? Uh, it is all painting examples, Rex. Now, I I do have... Where the heck did those go? Yeah. I do have some videos where I'm mixing the oil paints, and then there was a, a very recent video where I did all of these different little color chart things. But it's... I can talk... But if, unless I'm actually doing this, the talk is kind of meaningless. So that's why I always try to... Well, Rex, you, you've heard me kind of say that's why I try to have all the props around me so that you can actually see examples of things instead of me just kind of saying, well, it's like this. But then you don't actually get to see something. Now, speaking of seeing something, I'm looking over here. Because I like that green that I threw in over there, I'm going to try and get some of that over here too. Is it the exact same skin tone as the other ones? No, it's not. But really, nobody's going to know that there is a slight difference between the greens in her and the greens that are on, say, his feet over here or some of the greens that are in this. Again, it's, the leather on that hood is somewhat similar to this, but they're they're not meant to be exactly the same. Uh, let's see. I'll catch you later, Zambies. I think we've got... Uh, yeah, I think we're all caught up there. Now, again, going back to our our homemade cadmium green light, which is hilarious. And we'll get a couple of more lights on the skin tone there. Uh, nope. Nope. Not going to mess around with that, but I am going to get just a little light over here, too. Because that just got super dark. 
Let's see if I can't sneak in some green here. Ah, that's better. Yep. And people will never, they'll never be able to say, oh, look, you put green right there. No, they're just, they're not even going to notice that. It'll just be some other light color. Just like the green that we put back here, ain't nobody going to know that's there. Well, except for us, and we won't tell anybody. Okay, what the heck is, okay. I'm looking at this, going, well, let's get a little bit lighter up here. Maybe hit this feather. And that feather, too. Back to this crazy sort of phthalo blue color that we made. Boy, I really like that green that, that snuck its way into his feathers over there. So we're going to pop her. See a couple little blue dots there. Let's take our blending brush. Oh, look at that. They don't go away, but they're nowhere near as pronounced. And look at how this lets me get these tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny little lines. That's the oils just let you do so much more. Look at all these little teeny lines that we can get so nice and easy here. And then say, oh, you know what? Why don't we just... Uh, Blend some of these guys like this and just cut that down a little bit. You just can't do that with the acrylics, unfortunately. Speaking of a couple more of our little yellow lights there and then reflected light here. Yes, we're going to do that. And as our kind of an off-white yellow. It's got actually a little pink in it now because it's been sort of contaminated by other stuff, but all the better. There's some nice reflected light right there. Oh, hey, Southbound Metalhead. How are you doing? Uh, thank you so much. It's part of uh, it's part of our Corvus Cabal here. So here's uh, something we were working on. This one, what was this? Monday night, I guess, maybe? And then this was last night. And we're doing this one tonight. We've also got some other ones that we've been working on. So we'll probably grab this guy here and do do some more stuff on him too. Well, we've got some other ones. This guy here, we were just showing how we could do some glazing on that. So the, all the oils here are dry. And we were just showing how you can still use, even though the oils may be dry, it doesn't mean you lose all the advantages of the oils. Back to a little dot of white over here. Oh, hey, Gorath, how are you doing? Yeah, Gorath, it's a, what's interesting is that the, and it's not even the fluorescent orange all by itself. It's, uh, it's a lot of it is the cadmium orange that's in there. And, well, basically just cadmiums in general. Because we've been showing this a few times here. I just want to get the little lighter edge there. Now, this was done with fluorescent acrylics right here. And okay, it looks warm and toasty and everything else. This has barely any fluorescence on it. Look at the intensity of this oil paint. Versus, I mean, this literally looks like it's on fire. And I think we've got, yeah, this one should pretty much show it too. Yeah, look at the intensity of this versus the intensity of that. It's It's... Well, that's oils are more intense pigment. It's just it is it's the nature of the beast that oils would be more intense. So yeah, that is uh, uh and I'm I'm loving that burnt umber. That's actually that's a color that we don't want to forget about. Respect the umber. That is going to be I do believe the thirty fourth chapter in the book of Wapo. Respect the umber. We kind of we kind of lost respect for it. We thought uh, all it can do is just that initial pre-glaze, preparation glaze, and then we realized nope, it can do much more than that. It can certainly do much more than that. Okay, we we need to get back into a little bit of a light on the edge of this here. Ah, oh, I'm doing good. Just finished up a mini myself. Just got a basin. Oh, so what were you working on, Southbound? 
Yeah, burnt sienna that kind of got replaced by the by the uh, terra rosa. Yeah, once terra rosa came along, it sort of uh, took up the spot that burnt sienna usually had. But we we might well we're going to be using burnt sienna in a in a video that I'm doing for the Patreon page. Well, we're doing a bunch of color swatches, but we're doing those with the browns and the yellows. So Burnt Sienna will be making a comeback, and I'm sure I will learn something with that. Just like the uh, the Purple Matter, I learned something with that. There was a nifty little color combo that I didn't quite know was there. Oh, gee was Speaking of colors, could use a little bit of Terra Rosa right there. Yeah, that's helpful. Uh, Terra Rosa is slightly warmer than burnt sienna. The burnt umber is uh, nice and close to the Van Dyke brown. Let's see, Spider-Man, you mentioned in a previous stream, combining some of the Sculpey clay to get a better break effect. Oh, it was the white Sculpey and the, like, I think uh, Armored Wolf has it, yeah. So it was... The white Scopey and the pink Super Scopey or whatever the heck that is. And you just kind of fold it over and over. That That's your Damascus Scopey. We were, I think that's what we decided to call it, Damascus Scopey. I do have a couple of lighter straps that I want to get here. Some lighter things on the hands some lighter things on the sword blade here some lighter things on this little piece of armor back here did I make the paint too thin or thin enough I made it just thin enough you never know sometimes you are sitting there say okay that should be nice and thin sometimes it's too thin and we're gonna we're gonna lighten up the skin tone even more here. Now see we're doing the stipple thing again. Because I want that paint to stick there. If I just brush it on, that brush stroke is just gonna remove the paint that's sitting there. That's that stipple type brush stroke, almost like you're using a rapidograph pen, that's gonna be your key to making that paint stick there. Uh, let's see, Mars Yellow, that's a sleeper color. Yeah, Spider-Man, that is not something I've, I haven't done that type of thing in quite a while. I think uh, that, oh, that's it, the tree bark basically made that kind of unnecessary. The tree bark was way more versatile than that method, so if you're wondering why that method went away, that would be one of the reasons why. Or the main reason, anyway. So I'm going to leave that blood effect there. Not going to mess around too much more with that, but we're going to maybe see if we can get a a shiny highlight here on the beak of our little crow. Just a couple of highlights on here. I I don't want to draw too much attention to that, but since we, the way we were highlighting some of the the feathers on our other Corvus guy right here, I thought, well, let's do it on this one too. Let's do that on him. Uh, I think. Uh, now, what's going to be, oh, yeah, that fluorescent orange is intent. Now, uh, Gora, the other thing that might happen is that because we've been using the burnt umber as more of a late-stage glaze, that might be something that happens with the burnt sienna. Because guess what that was? We were using that when that initial kind of pre-glaze type of thing. So let's uh, we'll just set her off to the side again.